woman like that. I want to see this girl. Ba-da-dum. Oh my God, we are so, so good at singing. And I think the people love it. Do they? <laughs> Probably not. But I think they like that we like it. Listen, I, there's a song for everything. And I love music. I've always loved music. So yeah. when I realized today it was this a podcast all about you. Just let's just warn people right? off the top. It's the podcast all about me. Your questions answered. Well, yeah, but you're getting to know the Jesse Wiseman better. That's right. Stop with the ice. That's shit. right. <laughs> I'm just gonna be so uncomfortable the whole time and be like ridiculous. You do that weird eye thing where you yep. shut one eye uh-huh. and then you look like you're stroking balls, like. <laughs> yeah <laughs> like mid-air when you know do that when like a song comes on that i like right and you kick your leg out like yep. you're an excited dog getting scratched uh-huh. in one position uh-huh. over and over again and you always get it on camera <laughs> somehow <laughs> you always have a video that surfaces the next day you're and i'm welcome. like that's what good friends are you for were, you were video okay <laughs> thought it was a picture but anyway yeah well welcome to drinking broettes guys um welcome. brought to you by ghostbed.com Ooh. only the best bed in the world yeah. we'll get into that later um yeah so it is gonna be a a show about yeah, me getting to know you getting to know me i know and, and then i know also you're so uncomfortable with this so right uncomfortable now, I but i also have to say we're doing one all about you yeah, as yeah. well so it's not just of it's yeah, not just me. <laughs> even though she's, even though you are more important. Can Let's you imagine if I was like Tiffany? Do you mind if we just? Yeah. Do. do you mind if we just do? Can you just ask me a ton of questions about? That'd be myself? great. So here's where but the genesis always, of this yeah. was: is that we did an intro kind of on our first episode of mm-hmm. like trying to talk about ourselves, and we're both horrible. We suck at it. At, we were taught as children, yeah, kids. We were raised right. How about that? We were. You don't brag. No. Don't brag about yourself. Like if someone asks, you can mm-hmm. tell them, but don't offer up the information. Correct. So it's kind of like people are like, well, that intro was like, gave me nothing, you guys. I don't <laughs> I know, know who I the think fuck I you said, are. Like one thing. And <laughs> that was like a big deal. Yeah. And people were like, wait, what? And I know. Part of me was like, if only you knew more, but I don't want to tell you. I know. And you just like <laughs> glossed over it. You're like, yeah. And then I fucking did this. And it was like fucking crazy. But anyways, Bachelor. Oh, my. Okay. I have to say right now, I'm so fucking over this season. Like after last night, I, by the way, I worked while I did it last night. So it had maybe 50% of my attention. Okay. Cause you're done because with I, giving I can't. it. Yeah. You're done with giving it the full and attention. And I felt so in tune with Kelly's last words. Because she got let go, Ugh. obviously. And she was just kind of like, I Kelly don't. Kelly is all of us. Yeah. She goes, I just don't understand what he, what he didn't see in me. Now he's left with a bunch of children. And I'm kind of like, and that's how I feel too. Yes. And Kelly was, she goes, I mean, towards the end, she finally was just like, hey. It's almost like she knew she was going home. And she was like, hey, look at me. I'm a fucking attorney. I know. 27. These are children. I'm accomplished. What yeah. do you want? And I, well, I'll say this too. Like, I don't want to say that every 22, 23 year old is in the same boat, right? For the most part, most people around the age are not as mature yet in life, right? Sure. And, and with I guess- experiences, but they are definitely those people who have experienced a lot and were very mature for their age. Like one of my sisters was always very mature for her age. For sure. Right? I've met and she's them. like seven years like younger than us um they're just not so, on this show but correct yeah. so I'm, we're not saying that overall but the ones on the show do not seem ready for they don't anything seem ready. and there's just a huge difference between 22 and 27 mm-hmm. most of the time no there is though most of the time so and you don't, i think that's just what it is and you just you just feel like because he's always the bachelor's always spouting spewing that like i i need you need to be ready are you ready for he, this he we're gonna get some girl married but he doesn't start drama exactly like, that's what he's looking for like he he's so confused that he thinks women he thinks being, when someone cries that means they're opening up no <sighs> right he thinks that when someone's dramatic and cannot articulate their feelings and cannot literally even understand their own feelings to to say them to him he thinks that that's love. He thinks that that's yeah, right. He's so confused. Right. When he had Kelly sitting there straight up saying like, "No, let's have fun with this. Like, I'm really enjoying this." Da 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 da. Like, what? And we don't have to make things complicated. To him, he was like, "Wait, this should be complicated, right? Because this is a how the process goes." And yeah. uh, I just, it? I'm really glad that you're that you've moved on. I'm so from annoyed. Him. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, I've along. gotten a lot of messages from friends like in my neighborhood and stuff that are just like, "What?" 
I was so blind. Like, what was wrong with me? I don't <laughs> know what it is because he's not attractive. To me, he's no. not attractive no. enough to be blinded by his, like, g- good gorgeous looks. looks. No. I don't know what happened with everyone, but... I thought, well, because the way he was portrayed on the last season. Let's be yeah. real. Yeah. Right? The way he was portrayed with Hannah is he seemed to be the, with the most mature out of all the guys there, for the yeah. most part. Seemed very level-headed. He was never in the drama. He was always very happy and loving. He wore his heart on his sleeve. And on top of that, I mean, he fucked four times in a goddamn windmill. So you go, <laughs> okay, this guy has some confidence. This yeah. guy is decisive. And I think based upon what people saw, including the production crew, they they thought that he would be ready for it. Yeah. And here's what I will say between him and Hannah. Like when Hannah was picked to be the bachelor, the bachelorette, I was like, no fucking way. I will not watch this season because the way she was portrayed on that season was just was d- horrible. She didn't seem like she had any of her shit together. Right. And then she was like the best. One. She was the best. <laughs> she was the best bachelor ever. Like she wouldn't have put up with any of the stuff that no. he's putting up with. Like she would have walked in the room and be like, you guys, if you can't fucking get your shit together, you're going to leave. Like yeah. so her actions match her words, whereas his actions do not. But then she also kept picking that weird loser stalker guy. Luke P? Yeah. Yeah, but here's the thing. I, I got to kind of like, I kind of feel for her. I've been attracted. Like, I, you can't, it's really hard sometimes when you find yourself extremely attracted to someone and so drawn to them and you know, like they're bad for you, but you keep, you want to give them like a fair shake. For sure. You personally want to give them this fair shake. And I think she had to figure out for herself and not just listen to the guys, right? Because there's mm-hmm. been times, too, where I could have easily listened to everyone else in my life and said, like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. But I had to find out for myself, right? Because if I let yeah. this person go willy-nilly without seeing it for myself, I probably always still want them. Especially and you have to learn. at her age. So she was mm-hmm. 23. Oh, what? 24 when she was the bachelorette, right? So no, like, I had no idea. At that age, when you get older, you kind of, like, see signs mm-hmm. that you can be like, mm. I'll say this too. I think I'm good on this. If I was a 23 year old listening to this right now, I'd be like, bitch, what are you talking about? I'm very mature from age. And now, for right? sure. But looking back, and just like you said, there's a big difference between 23 and 27. When I look back, I go, oh my God, I grew so much in that time. I learned so much about myself. Like, yeah. there is a major difference. Once you, once you go through it, then you see it. Right. But you have to, you have to be that age. And you have to yeah. make mistakes. And you have to make those mistakes. Yeah. So like in order to get to a 27, 28, 30, where you're like, okay, I learned a lot, yeah, but you have to go through it. So don't try and act older than you are no. at 22. Like make the mistakes you're that you're to gonna make because then you won't make them when you're fucking 30 Correct. and it's way worse, right? Oh, yeah. So do all, I used to say like, once you're like 28, it's just not cute anymore. Mm-hmm. That was the thing of like, if you're, if you blackout if you do do all these certain things that are kind of like okay at 23 20 you know that's when you should be doing all this fucking fucked up shit um so do all of that then so that when you get older and like be immature don't try and don't try and get engaged at 22 like what are you fucking doing that's what i told so i've had girls legit you know how like you become friends with girls at bars right in the oh, bathroom for sure. best, best friends best friends yeah and so when i lived in california there would be times when the guys always wanted to go out so i'm in the girls bathroom and these young drunk girls came in sure. and i remember one time they were like ah and they were like 21 22 and they were worrying about a dude and having stress over her boyfriend and i just and they were asking me for advice sure right so i wasn't it wasn't unsolicited they were yeah, like yeah. oh my god what do i do like you seem mature for your you age. I'm like, you're like, you mean old? Me. <laughs> you mean old? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, uh, girls. Hey, I took it. And I went, listen, you guys are fucking only young once. Do all why, the things. Why tie yourself down with some guy who's apparently causing you so much trouble? I was like, be single. Fuck dudes. Make mistakes. Learn what you like in life. Yeah. Get your hoe phase out. Like, we all got to get that hoe you phase out. To. You know what I'm saying? Because like, when you're guess ho- what? When you're older, it's not cute. Yeah, but it comes out. Like it will no come matter what, out no matter what it is it is clawing out of you like sure. a fucking Wolverine. That's true, right? Sure, yeah, and yeah, you yeah. have to let it go at some point. Yeah, you know what? There's this girl, um, her Stanley, who we called her when we went through seer training together, right? And uh, I had a lot of respect for her because of this. We we're both young, mm-hmm. you know. I was 20 years old. I think she was same age, but she knew that the guy she was with she wanted to fucking marry. Like she knew it. Okay, like they Look, they 100 percent knew they wanted to get sure. married. But she realized, right, in her maturity with things, she goes, listen, 
in order for us to get married, we both have to get our little hoe phase out. You have desires and things that you want, and I have desires and things that I want. And I guarantee that if we're married, we're going to be sitting there and to ourselves and wondering what would have been like to have that threesome with two Asian chicks. Yeah, like, that's what yeah, he wanted, yeah, right? Yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. And what would have been like to, like, been with, you know, another dude. Two guys, another right? dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so she purposely broke up with him, even though he didn't want to. And she was like, listen, you need to fuck whoever you want. I do whatever I want. No questions asked. And if we come back together. Yeah, and if we come back together, like, because we're going to. Like, she was telling him, because he was so worried that they wouldn't, right? Mm -hmm. Um, They got the phase out. They did it. They got married. They have kids. Shut up. Fucking doing amazing. I think that's a very (sighs) mature thing. Seriously. Because I'll tell you this right now. I know people who've gotten married who haven't gotten that phase out of their system. They did it when they were fucking married. Yes, I you know, know people like that too. And I'm not saying everyone has to have it because there's there's people out there who have self control, right? And they don't, or they just don't, you know. Well, like, that's what I mean. They yeah. don't. They don't care. They don't wonder. Yeah. They're very happy with what they have. But yeah. I would say majority of people, yeah. and that's the thing too, guys. When we talk about these things, we're just talking about our experiences and like yeah, yeah, what yeah. we see for sure. And like, kind of majority, we're not. Gl- we're grouping everyone up and. Um, you know, I got this. married later, so yeah. I think that helped. It does help. So I like got. I had like my own cute apartment and work and do you know what I mean? I got yeah. all these things and it's not just like a hoe phase. It's like living by yourself too. Independent. Yeah. Totally independently. Experiencing things. Traveling on your by yourself. Yeah. Like doing all these things that will start to creep up sometimes. Yeah. If all you know is marriage, it will start to be like, Hey, you know, I've never done that. Yeah. And it's like, I'm saying it's not just being slutty. It's no. like, I've never, gone to you know backpacked whatever but anything sure right um, no you're right or, or owned be respons- a business be responsible or for yourself paying your own bills not depending that. upon someone else coming having to alone home. time right being alone and knowing how to do that that's I, huge i miss <laughs> oh my gosh i miss that <laughs> and we're just gonna say really quick and we love our husbands very much but the other day i was thinking about my last apartment that i had okay i was thinking about on the way here you <laughs> It was so cute. Well, I know you're getting like, yeah. Well, I will say this. It's it's so funny. I grew up an extrovert my entire life. I yeah. really did. I was always hanging out with friends, always talking. Always didn't want to be alone. No, I yeah, yeah. No. Um, and then once I joined the military, I really started to appreciate my alone time. Even though I was alone in my dorm all the time, like, and I would always go out with my friends, I, I looked back on it and I would go, I actually really had a lot of alone time. Yeah. Because I journal a ton, I would think a ton, I would just spend a lot of time alone. And when you're married, and I'm sure when you have kids, you don't get the luxury of the mm-hmm. alone time. And I now feel like I'm part introvert, part extrovert, right? Yeah. Where I can totally be extroverted and be fine in my bubbly, normally self, as long as I get my alone time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? The yeah. time to decompress, to recharge, to take care of myself, to just think, to be left the fuck alone. Yeah. Right? Don't fucking touch me <laughs> for two hours. Nobody touch me. I don't know if everyone's like this, but I, a lot of my I'm girlfriends sure. that I talk to are very similar in the sense, right? Where there's sometimes my husband will be like, what's wrong? Like, what, what do you want to hang out with me? And it's like, no, no, it's please don't take this personally. Wow. I just need my me time. Yeah. You know? And that's why sometimes for me, um, like going TDY, which in the military is like a temporary duty, like you mm-hmm. go out of state um, for like weeks or a month or whatever, yeah. was kind of like my alone time. Oh. You know, and and a lot of the guys would give me shit and be like, oh, you don't want to come out and drink with us? And I was like, no, I no, want to dude. spend time working out in my fucking room alone. Sleeping. Doing whatever the fuck I want. Someone next to me <laughs> pinwheeling around. Right. Breathing on me. Yeah. Um, and I need that now for survivability. Yeah, I do. No, and that's. Uh, I think it's a healthy thing. I think it's healthy. And um, guys that are mature kind of know that and they'll, they won't take it personally. But I did, like, when you're younger and you ask for alone time, they get real pissed. Wait, what? Huh? I know. Oh. What? What's the matter? What did yeah. I do? What did I do? And same, like, I am, uh, is that, do you like my guy yeah, impersonation? Good. Seeing you do it was probably <laughs> more funny <laughs> than the <sound>. <laughs> um, But uh, I was same extrovert. I, like, FOMO. I had to go to yeah. every single party, every single time someone was going out. I had to go Me whether too. I was tired or whatever. I'm like, I got to go. I gotta go. Yeah. And now I'm just like, 
oh my god like it has to be something really good yeah <laughs> to well, get now, me out now i feel like i go through this inner ba- like this battle in my head right where i go well i do kind of want to go out but i really don't feel like getting dressed up and, and i, I kind of want to stay bad home tomorrow. Yeah. right because i i don't really want to go out i want to have my alone time just lounge but at the same time what if i miss out on something yeah right yeah i go through FOMO this i really need to work on like I can't believe I still have it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe and it's starting maybe to go. Who we are. Yeah, it's starting to go away. I mean, I don't ever want to not have it, right? Like, I don't ever want to be like, not care at all. Yeah. Like, I like the fact, because you could easily do that too, where it's True. like the people that literally, you cannot get them out I of know. the house. Like, and then you just stop asking them. And then once they come. get out, all they want to do is go back home. Yeah, and, and like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that you can turn yourself into an introvert without do you know what i mean i can see that and until you force yourself to you go ha- out and- a little bit you have to i mean don't force yourself if you don't want to but yeah. like it is very good and i have to force my husband to do it sometimes where i'm just like i know you don't feel like it but these are like you need to have relationships in your life <laughs> like you do i yeah. think whether I it's like one close healthy. friend that you go out with once a month but you have to make a point to like Go out with just that friend. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And have a glass of wine or not or go for a walk or whatever. Yeah. But I think being social and especially now these day and age, like you have to force yourself to do it because it's so easy not to. Yeah. You feel like you're social on your phone. You're watching Netflix. There's so many things to binge. You're like, I'm good. I know. But you're not good. Yeah. Like once you if you are ever forced to be in a situation, you'll be like. Uh, uh, you'll uh, seize uh, out uh, you won't you need to know how to do small talk to too talk. yeah as horrible as it is and i hate it so much yeah. i usually just like to do medium talk right no i agree and <laughs> you know yeah like i don't care how like what part of town you live in yeah i want to know how you're fucking yeah i want to know some shit i want to know when the last time you fucking had sex Give with your husband the are you guys doing it or not doing it? Do yeah. you know what i mean and they're like listen nice to meet you yeah, i'm like what, yeah you know let's what? get into it i don't give a fuck about what you ate for breakfast <laughs> okay just tell me some fucking i want to know what juicy fucking... juicy stuff <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> i want to know what kid in the neighborhood you fucking hate <laughs> but you know what, what go- child it's good to get you that hate. out too yeah. i will say this i grew up um very talkative like my younger sister would apparently always go up to my mom and be like can you tell tiffany to be quiet so i can finally talk which is interesting considering is i'm on a why podcast kind of chose you for the job and to which be is honest. why i'm also an instructor <laughs> yeah. for a living I, yeah. all i do is fucking talk yeah. for a living right and so it but it's healthy my mom knows that i'm the type of person that when i call her up a lot of times if i'm feeling down about something or there's something bothering me when i talk about it I feel then better. You're good. Yeah. I don't need a fucking solution. I, like, right. Yeah. I don't need to you to solve the fucking world for me. I, I don't even sometimes need you to even relate. It's just sometimes when I'm just able to talk about it and I have a, an ear who's actually listening going, oh, my God. Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh. I go, oh, well, I feel a lot better. And that's I just know. the type of person I've always been. And I think some people are like that. I think a right? lot of people are. Where if they um, just are able to communicate just get with it others. out and, and almost it out. it's almost like we know use each other as a soundboard you just need to like talk it through with yourself yeah. and it's sa- you don't want to feel crazy i do it in the car sometimes i do too and like now it's so I don't much really better talk out loud much to myself i'll definitely talk out loud okay in good the car for you but um it looks i'd always um <laughs> before i would have to like pretend that i was on the on phone, the phone. <laughs> But now, because of like how the cars are, where it just comes out of the speaker, yeah. when you see someone talking in yeah, their car, you don't, think about it. you don't think about it because it could be coming through the speaker. So I'm good to be crazy. Good and I you. am. But I think it's because Should, you, you could might in a store on a, obviously nowadays too with a oh, fucking Bluetooth. Put, it, right? put in your yeah. put in your thing and just talk like your have AirPod. the conversation. Yeah. Because if I <laughs> look, uh, we were talking about husbands a little bit, both of our husbands mm-hmm. and. There is something that they do. It was explained to me, though. But what they do is you'll try and talk to them and they just keep interrupting with solutions. And yeah. sometimes you have to tell them, I don't like I'll have to say right off the bat, I don't want you to say anything or try and fix it because mm-hmm. you can't. This is from the men are from Mars, women from Venus. Oh, men is it in fucking, there? Yeah. And oh, okay. This is from a lot of different relationship books. Okay. Too. Men happen to be fixers. And so they just want to like, well, or either that or like, I warned you I t- I warned I you about that or well why don't you and it's just like no 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 yeah just let me get to the end of this yeah and actually you can't fucking help me at all yeah 
right? And they hate that. Yeah. They like hate that they can't fix it. And here's the thing too, is I feel like a lot of times guys or the husbands, are, my, at least my husband doesn't understand. Sometimes I just want to talk. Just talk. Sometimes he's like, wait, you just want to fucking just You talk. don't have to say anything. Yeah. They're like, what? Huh? Right? Because sometimes getting him to talk is, you know. For sure. Communicate sometimes. For sure. Certain things. Like, why did you just tell me? Oh, I didn't want to. Like, it's like pulling teeth. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. It's very different. Very different. Uh, one last thing I'm going to say about yeah. The Bachelorette before we get in the sponsors. Let me hear it. Do you remember? Did you did you see the little um, 12-year-old girl note that Hannah wrote <laughs> about the 18 reasons that she loved him? I do recall that. How did that make you feel, It was Jessie? so... I felt so uncomfortable, didn't you? What it made, made me what, feel... She was a tiny child. You know what made me feel uncomfortable? She's a baby. Was the fact that Kelly it's was fake. sent home and Hannah broke down fucking crying as if someone killed her Oh, dog. because you want to know why? Because she was f- faking it so hard that like... It's like when you run up... You know, after you run like fucking eight miles or something, you're like, holy shit. Like, you do almost feel like... You want to break down and cry because you just like got through something and she was just faking it so hard and like you can act so much where it will affect you emotionally. Yeah. I and once you you, finally win. Yeah. I was an interrogator. Right. For like the three, four years I did it. You're faking all these fucking emotions. Yeah. Right. All day long. But eventually you're not feeling them. And it t- it's very taxing to even fake it, too. For sure. And there were sometimes you had to fake being sick or all these other things or like hyperventilate. You really would start doing it, you know, and you're, you would start feeling very tingly and like you'd feel these yeah. emotions. And listen, I guarantee I do feel that's like probably it's what all it was acting. Right. Yeah. Isn't she an actress or something? Too? They all are. Yeah, they all are. But I was just kind of like, oh, honey, pull it together. Oh, like why? But that's such a weird reaction that you're like, what? is going because she she just has no control what did she say she said something like oh my god that was so stressful or that was so scary or i don't know and to me stressful the the whole time i think about it to myself was like this is just a game for you guys that's it it's like you got to the you got to that point in the game and you're just like oh i've just been like trying so hard all day to get some guy to like me and then you just break down because you won basically Mm -hmm. right like you got to the next level and you're like okay I'm going to do it again tomorrow. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So anyways, that's the last thing I'm going to say. But now we're going to get into sponsors. And then all you're about gonna, you. You're going to make me really uncomfortable for the rest of the show. <laughs> and welcome. I'm into it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because then you're going to be in the hot seat next, <laughs> next. time. <laughs> yeah. Um, first sponsor. Best sponsor. Mm. Mm, no, we have two really good sponsors. But uh, first sponsor is ghostbed.com. Forward slash drinking bros. That's yep. going to be the landing page, guys, that um, we'll just have all the deals. We'll have drinking bros testimonial. Mm-hmm. That's where you guys all go to get the deals for ghost bed. Um, we need to get you a ghost bed. We need to get you an adjustable base mm-hmm. with a USB port. with the USB and lights. Oh, I love that Um, because it's going to be less. Well. Yeah, they have 25% off right now. Yeah, so that's going until March 3rd. That's President's Day sale. Yeah. It was 15% off, and they were like, you know what? Not good enough. <laughs> They're that. always trying to better themselves at ghost yeah. bed, aren't they? That's, 25 is a, 25% off is legit. It's really good, because if you get a bundle, or if you get, like, let's just say you just get the Lux mattress, yeah. and you do a pay, pay-as-you-go, like, no interest, you're pro- I think you're paying, like, 20-something, yeah. maybe 30 a month to me when you no get interest. 20 percent off or more on something with anything i'm like that's a steal that's a steal if you it's 10 percent, I mean? like, you're like okay mm-hmm. 15 all right 25 that makes a dent no it does that makes a dent yeah. it, they deliver in like two days you will not be disappointed i never have any problem completely pushing this product yeah. which i have been doing for a couple years now on all the shows that's why it's forward slash drinking bros well i got people who i got a couple people who hit me up saying that they needed a new bed and they got a ghost bed i know and i they saw were super pumped about it of course and i was like yes follow back up with us yeah. guys let us know hit us back up yeah and don't and feel free too to hit us in the comments on their pictures too with it not yeah, just yeah, in yeah. dms so other people can be like oh well shit exactly that's cool because all that stuff helps absolutely you know? I'm uh, thinking about my ghost bed tonight. I am going to be sleep training. My child is sleep regression, which means they wake up 
four to five times oh, a night. That's fun. Um, like regression is like when they sleep really good and then all of a sudden okay. at like 18 months or like some random age, they uh-huh. just start sleeping shitty. Really? I don't know what it is. There's like these different stages. Oh, okay. So we're in sleep regression right now. Was it normal? Was it normal for him to not wake you up at all? Yeah. So oh, I'm pretty shit. good. Yeah. I'm pretty That's good cool. at like sleep training. Right. So it's like when they're newborn, they wake up. All night, whatever. Pretty much all night, you never sleep. And then when you get to like, you know, around eight, nine months, they should be getting up maybe one time, right? Mm -hmm. Things like this. Uh, And then they will eventually sleep through the night if you do the right sleep training. But then at some point, something will happen, you know, some kind of mental change or mental hurdle or because they're growing, Mm -hmm. brains are growing everything, and then they'll kind of regress back. Or they just kind of want to be held or whatever yeah. it is. And then you can't be a fucking bitch about that, right? Yeah. Your kid just wants you to hold, hold them. them. I'm I like, know. get it, get it together. It's so funny because I've always wanted that. Like, I, I look forward to the day where. Totally. And I, I have a feeling that I'm, this is going to come bite me in the ass. Um, cause I, everyone I tell this to like moms, I'm like, I can't wait till the day where my kid wants me to hold them nonstop and they want everything to do with me and they're yeah. obsessed with me. Yeah. And then moms say, you say that now. No, but it's Until true. it happens. But. You know, like, no, it's true. Because then you'll get like when I, I he's I, almost two, yeah. and I'm like, I don't want. Then you're like, I should have savored. The so moments? that's a smart oh, way to do okay. it. Okay, because I've always wanted that. Like when I see it's kids just leech to onto their mothers, I'm like, oh, I wish you could do that with me. I know. Like, I want to feel special and loved and important. Like, I know. I want to be your when security. When you're in it, totally. Yeah. When you're in it, I know. I know those moms. Like I'm, I'm with you, girls. Like when you're in it, you're just like, oh my god. Like, like I'm saying, you just want. Someone to not be touching you for one hour mm-hmm. of the day. Just do, no one touch me. Yeah. Get these all three boys away from me, right? <laughs> but the way that you're thinking about it is totally right. Yeah. Because there is a time when they don't. And you're just like, if you could just try and keep that in mind, what you okay. just said, like, even in the hardest times, like, try, try to keep that in mind when you <laughs> want to just be like, good. <laughs> Try. I'll, I'll, I'll replay this to you and you'll be like, okay, yeah, step out of it. I really minor. want them to yeah. hold me. Like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, next sponsor, sorry, went on a. I'll, the point of that was that I cannot wait to get home to my ghost bed tonight. To sleep in that. To sleep in it. I, I say goodbye to it every morning. Like I make it and then I, I look know. at the ghost bed and I'm like, I'll see you later, you know motherfucker. Those mornings, you know those mornings where you look at your bed and you're like, I can't wait to get back. I cannot you later. wait. Those are the days when I'm like, oh, this is going to be a rough day. It's going to be a rough day. <laughs> and I haven't always felt that way. I really do. Th- I mean, I really do think ghost bed is an amazing product and yeah. has changed my sleeping. Fuck yeah. For sure. That's awesome. Um, Love them. Next up, we have StrikeForceEnergy.com. Yes. Are you on the Strikeforce train or what, girl? <laughs> I like it. I like, I it. like it. I do. I'm very so impressed. The best thing you said about it was like, a little goes a long it way, does. guys. So yeah. it really will get you going. If you take that whole, if you take that whole packet or like a whole squirt, if you have the um, tabletop like bottle, it will get, oh, yeah. it'll get you going. And so it is good to kind of like do it throughout the day, mm-hmm. but it's good for pre pre workout for just like the slump two or three in the afternoon, and you don't want to yeah. drink coffee. Definitely don't want to drink coffee before the gym. No, I mean unless it's like super early. But you shit your pants, shit your weights. pants. <laughs> it's good to mix with. I think we're getting Tiffany com- possibly completely off the Red Bull and vodka. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I don't know if it'll ever Someone, completely I don't happen. I, don't think, I, I think it's still just running through my fucking blood, you know, oh, like yeah, through no. my veins. Like well, it's in my your... DNA. It's part of my white trash DNA. Well, it'd <laughs> yeah. be like, no, Jesse, you can't drink wine. I'm like, well, that's the one I know will keep me kind of correct even. Yeah. So you can't take that away from me. But I think we have the same combo. Yeah. If we do vodka, soda and strike force. Yep. Um, it is apparently the guys zero are, calories. Apparently the guys do it with fucking Jameson. Oh, dude! Yeah, but you can like you saw with liquids. You could literally do it with anything. Well, that's perfect with the liquid too, right? You can put it in water for pre workout and then alcohol at night, and you'll just be good to, to go. go. Or sorry, alcohol during the day. That too. That is a good potion <laughs> if you need to drink during the day, which is very hard for me to do. But if I am oh, gonna do it, yeah, because you need. Energy. I have yeah, because you have to last. I have to last, and I have to make fucking it fucking slow down. It goes downhill. Mm-hmm. We had this the other night. I know. We talked about this. We got to keep going. We were at dinner and we were like, if we don't get our fucking drink, we're going to fall <laughs> we're gonna, asleep yeah. on the table. Um, but zero, uh, zero carbs, yeah. zero sugars. Gluten free. Gluten free. Yeah. If anyone cares about that. But 
I think a lot of people do. Yeah. It's just a great product and we love them over there. And tell them how get, to, tell them how to get 20% off. What code do they use? Okay, guys. <laughs> so use promo code LADYBONER for 20% off. And Tiffany loves that I have to say that. Oh, and by the way, I love it. That one's just becoming a different thing for me now. Like Good. I just think of a different thing. Yeah, you think of happiness. You know what I mean? I don't think of the huge clip that I used to think of. <laughs> protruding out to like me, a little I'm penis. I'm so childish that that's funny too. Like, I'm like, <laughs> you like I'm all of it. it. I'm like, ah, oh, like a weird. <laughs> so Strike Force, you guys know them. You love them. We would like to beat the drinking bros as far as like how much Strike Force we sell. So get you some lady boner mm-hmm. promo codes, Do you it. guys. Do it um, up. All right. So, so J balls, James. What's up? Um, how did you get that nickname anyway? Did Ross. did Ross just give it to you? My middle name is Blue. So is it's it? Jesse. Yeah. Je- well, we'll get into my hippie parents, obviously. Okay, yeah. But um, Jesse Blue. And so he just kind of Aww. melded that together and called me Jabes. But then I found out, Jared told me it was like from Tenacious D. Uh huh. Jables. Is that from Tenacious D? Yeah. But it oh. wasn't, it was like found out after. So it is and it isn't oh, okay. and whatever. But. Because I think it's cute I when I see like Team Jabes, right? Jables, and all this other stuff. And, and I like, think that's it's fun. also because I've always wanted a nickname. Like, did you ever like when you were younger be like, "Hey guys, <laughs> call me T for no. now on" or anything like that? Oh, okay, well but I was I've, like, I've always gotten nicknames. So I, you did? Reason, I never got. So them. Ross uh, calls me Tiffers, which I told him that my basketball coach called me that. Oh really? He was also my principal, I love it. and that became like a thing with all my friends. They call me Tiffers. Um, because our last name starts with a Z and it's like really long and it's Czechoslovakian. Oh. Everyone called my dad Z and then in the military they just called me Z. Like All that was right. our nickname, right? So you were just Z. Yeah, because in the military you go by your last name. Got like it. they always address you by your last name. So it was just so Same much easier softball. for them to be like, hey Z, <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> my, that's how my Yeah. That's how my dad got his fucking yeah. Z was from totally. co-ed fucking baseball softball. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> with my mom. Yeah. Okay. Same. Hey Z man. Z. I love so that. So now I'm Z. Well, okay. I was. Yeah. So. so I like, uh, I think it was like, uh, hey guys, call me J Blue or just J. I don't know. I tried, I tried a couple different things. And what I learned, obviously, which everyone knows now, is that you can't give yourself a nickname. Yeah. It's never really going to be the one well. that you want. Yeah. And the minute that you start asking for a nickname, too, a lot of times they give it's you gonna be the opposite. a really silly nickname where you, then you have to endure it the rest of your life way worse yeah so so well jess <laughs> jesse actually some guy called call me you, jb i guy, think that's what some it was. guy called you jessica the other day oh and i was kind of like um excuse me no i don't like that when did they do that uh on the I think, message i think they said it on youtube it was like in the comments like oh jessica and i was like who the fuck is jessica <laughs> i hate that so it right? is it is yeah it is jesse it's not short that's why, for that's jessica. Why I asked you. yeah because i remember I remember when I asked you if I can call you Jess because I want to make sure yeah, that I was I'm like, not just I don't making care. up some fucking nicknames for you. And you're like, oh, that's no, not no. abbreviate. Believe Jess. me, I'll take any nickname. I love it. <laughs> you feel so Except special. for like Big big Jess or something like this. Like, <laughs> big J. Big J. <laughs> and I'll be like, no, no, no. I'm really tiny. Everybody yeah. knows that. Yeah. So, so tell me when you were born, how much you weighed. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like. <laughs> Wait a minute, we're not going to do it. But let's go from the beginning of your life. Let's okay. and like just get into it. Dive right in first. I'm going to say first, uh, mm. memories a little hazy. Sure. Uh, I know, mine is I too. I drank and did a, we'll get to the high school years, <laughs> I guess, but I did a lot of um, hallucinogenics. Oh, good for you. Yeah, so memories hazy, but okay. what so what kid, do you want to know? You yeah, so I was California. Yeah, so I was born in California, Ojai, mm-hmm. California, which is like hippie central land, but it used to be like for real hippies. Now it's like Reese Witherspoon has a house oh. there for her hippie retreat kind of thing. Cool. Um, so it's definitely come up and coming. It definitely um, got more designer hippie. Mm-hmm. Whereas before it was just like Well, young. hippie's kind of in now over there, right? Exactly. So yeah. back in the day, it was like, you know, my parents drove a school bus from New York. I love it. Um, with a bunch of like puppies and a parrot and everything. Froze, mm. long hair. Uh, they were the epitome of Woods- Woodstock. Yeah, right there. they were just like the whole the whole thing. I love it. They were all of it, uh-huh. right? Weed, all of it. Yeah. Um, and came to California, landed in Ojai at that time. Like I said, it was just like a bunch of hippies trying to raise their kids, like small starter homes or whatever. So that was 
if that doesn't give you any insight into who you are me yeah yeah now you are the you have siblings I do I'm the oldest of three so I have two brothers okay yeah two younger brothers one is air force and the other is a chef I know air force in the house uh and i mean he's a he is chair force because he's a dental assistant but Uh, and never like like was combat but yeah right right because when i consider what i consider yeah what is chair force well it's just it's just you know like all the different branches like to rate you know razz each other okay right so um we that's the only thing they can really get us on kind of like oh you guys kind of like sit in chairs and part of me goes what the fuck do you sit in at your desk when you work true oh you sit in a chair too okay like so my husband like their way it's just like, their way like it's that's just my only rebuttal with it because my husband's right special forces yeah and he's in a chair half the time himself too if not yeah. more so i'm like well i mean aren't we all that's but, true but i think but we do dental, have a lot more desk jobs yeah right? yeah I, and i like paper pusher jobs and stuff like that but he's i mean dental's still walking around i give him credit for, sure. for some of that oh he's definitely not just but sitting yeah, he's, he's like not, makes teeth he's like a dental tech like sure. that whole thing but I think it was like when he said it, I was thinking of the dental chair, the dentist chair. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I was like, oh, is that what you I was like, that's so funny. Is that what you call yourself? I didn't know. It was like across the whole thing. Yeah. But anyway. No. Yeah. And then the other one's a, uh, a chef. surfer chef that's still in California living the fucking dream. Good for him. Good for him. How much how many like years do you guys have between you guys? Um, so me and the Air Force brother, Daniel, are kind of like Irish twins. Like literally oh. like a year. Cool. A year and a half. Yeah. Between us. So we mm-hmm. were like besties. And then the other one is seven. So I'm not going to say he was a accident, but he was a <laughs> <Accident>. happy surprise <laughs> later on in life. And we love him. He's, he's the best. Yeah. He's the best. So you guys grew up in Ohio. Mm-hmm. Like, did you guys grow up really well off? Did you guys no, grow up no. really no. Like, how'd you guys grow up? Yeah, my dad's a plumber. He has his okay. own um, company, so we're, like, just definitely working class. Like, we all... And my mom was a veterinary technician, so, like, it was just work... We were in daycare, working class, right? So mm-hmm. we're, like, the house is okay, but my dad is, like, general contractor, so he's, yeah. like, fixes it up That's to, like, like look dad. nicer. Yeah. He is? Yeah. Gosh. My dad has his own contracting business. Look at that. They're going to be besties look when they us. meet. <laughs> I bet they will. Oh, my God. They'll talk fucking houses oh, and fixing shit all day long. Are you kidding? Oh God, Did your dad fix up everything in your house? Like, yeah. So always... he just like try, you know, they put their hand in every little thing. There's like only one thing, and I'm sure your dad will say this, that they don't do, which is drywall. Oh, anything else. Oh, he does drywall. He will do it. He wow. does everything. That's huge. Yeah. But he'll, he'll do that. Or like, electrical. Like my does, dad won't do electrical that. or drywall, but he'll literally do anything else. Yes. Like tile, they'll try like stone yeah. work. I mean, they literally will do anything. Oh, I know. Which I kind of like. Yeah, and oh. I think that's why I sort of am the more crafty person, mm-hmm. like in handy person in a, in my relationship. <laughs> but thankfully, my husband I, just like just, pays for people to do it. So let good me ask for you him. this: If Ross is like, the toilet's fucking like messed yeah. up, you're like, yeah. I got it, babe. Yeah, <laughs> I've had to like put water in his like radiate you know what i mean radiator yeah. to get it going like i would go out and like mess mess mm-hmm. with the battery to get the car started and then go inside and do dishes and everything did your dad have you help with everything too kind yeah. of when you're younger yeah and like the flashlight holder position Fla- yeah. do you remember that the gopher do you remember being mm-hmm. the gopher so you yep. would just go and get certain tools for that yeah grab this tool so now you know if you didn't like, know all the di- oh yeah you would find out absolutely <laughs> You would find out. I worked with him for a little bit where yeah. I was like a cool like plumber's assistant yeah. gal. Um, but yeah, so just. That's cool. Yeah. Not well off, but not yeah. like, you know, and you're living in California. So it's like. It's expensive. Yeah. Was it still expensive already, back then too? Yeah. I mean, more so than. Other the, states. Other states for yeah. sure. And now it's ridiculous. But I will say that, you know, us having the smallest house on the best block. Mm-hmm paid off because now it's like california is i could never buy a house there oh, no. and their house is worth do you know what i mean oh yeah so much more so it was the smart thing to do for sure and i don't know i de- i like growing up there i know it's gone a little bit fucking crazy Has it? but i do like um the things that mm, that i got from 
growing up in California. It's just like a, mm-hmm. it's just a. It's who you are though. Yeah. It's just a chiller yeah. way of life. Right. And I grew up by the beach. So it's like, you're always just like, nothing's really too hardcore. Yeah. You're just like, whatever, man. Like, I think that's one of the attitudes I loved the most when I lived in California. When right? I go hang out at the beach, like I met this guy at a bar. Right. <gasps> and we didn't have any, like we didn't have, we didn't do anything physical together. We like, kissed once. Right. He was like, Hey, you can just sleep at my house. Right. And then he left the next morning to go on a trip to fucking Vegas and left me in his house and just told me to lock up oh, where yeah. I left. And I was like, oh, that is and he, classic Ventura Beach guy. That was, right? Yeah, yeah. And he li- and I woke up and I walked down to the beach and I was loving it. And I was like, this is so strange. Totally. But they also really loved it. Yeah. Um, and the thing with California, too, is that like you have to have at least a little bit of ambition because you can't live. Sure anywhere in these chill places without having some kind of other job yeah. right and so they income. have something but they're just the i don't know and it's always nice so they're they're never really pissed about there's no um seasonal depression kind of yeah. thing which definitely happens here for sure and i think mm-hmm. i i don't know if i have it but it's i always thought here. it was yeah i always thought it was like missing california but i think it's just the sun the sun yeah. wherever that is i miss that like being able to go outside the other thing with like california that is different from here is that like you never have to factor the weather in ever so like if you wanted to have a barbecue yep. you just have it if you want to go for a run you just go yeah here it's like uh let's see what it's <laughs> gonna be at three because um it looks like i can I, go running on right Wednesday. now it's sunny but it's gonna be raining in two hours you know what yeah. i mean or like let's have a barbecue but what we can't have it this time of year because you you know what i mean so it's i had to definitely change my mindset and be like okay like i can't just go for a walk at any time or i can't like eat outside at a restaurant yeah all year yeah. right which is it's a silly thing to miss. No, but I mean, I do. It makes sense. I, I mean, I get homesick about weird, like not weird, weird things, stuff. But I, that's I like, miss particular things yeah. that you were so immune to growing up that right. you kind of took for granted until you left. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So what did your mom do then? So she was a veterinary technician, Aww, which is like, yes. Was. So we would like go and like when we were younger, I remember going and like being in like a pack and play in the other room of this veterinary office yeah. i mean her boss was awesome obviously but um so she had a bachelor of science so she's like you know she's actually like super smart went yeah. to college all of this and was a veterinary tech um so they were just like constantly working and then once they got divorced she went to school for to be a chiropractor so mm-hmm. then she did four more years to be a doctor so good for she's her like i know so now she's like doctor dang dr d yeah yeah and my dad still is like killing it with his like plumbing uh the one thing i will say about him is like he just has so much business because he's very honest and very fair sounds like and my dad you, right mm-hmm. and it's like and it's they so don't even try nowadays, man yeah because everyone wants just to like take advantage of them and get money with oh however they can he like doesn't even have to i mean he won't call people back i'm like dad and he's like they're gonna be there like weirdly like there's nobody else in town like yeah. i'll call him in an hour like i'm having lunch with my daughter do you know what I mean I don't need to like he doesn't need to be like desperate about work anymore you know which is awesome that is not that he ever was yeah but um yeah I I definitely got that from him Mm is like if you're just fair and you don't try and fucking fuck people over Mm -hmm. and you're honest about what you can and can't do right if you're like dude I can fix this or if you're like I can't really do this. Correct. So I need to have either like a, another s- professional or something. We need to in. call someone else or like this is not going to work out the way you want it. Something like this. Right. So. Um, Integrity. He's just fucking awesome. Yeah. And it's rare chill. nowadays. That's yeah. cool. Definitely. So did you grow up going to like what type of schools did you end up going to? Like public schools? Public schools. It was like small. So it was like uh, the whole town. Was it? Uh, went to the same like. Um, I think the elementary schools were divided, but there was one middle school one high school for like our whole area so was it did you have a big class or no um pretty big but it's like the town wasn't that big so maybe like 500 oh that's big graduating class yeah 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 well i mean it was like the whole it was growing yeah yeah yeah. so that it was growing at that point i think now there must be a different one there has to be yeah because there's no way that everyone is able to go to that one school anymore no that school is just fucking massive yeah exactly <laughs> unless they just like build it like which they might Another be fucking look school. i don't know 
Did you like high school? Was high school a good time for you? And how was all that? Tell me a little bit about high school. High school. Uh, No, it wasn't um, a super great time. I was definitely the person that was like cool with everyone because I was uh, into like smoking weed and (laughs) selling acid. So I was cool with like the jocks and the hippies and the kind of everyone, you know, that was like wanting to do drugs. I was cool with them. Yeah. Um, I did. I played softball all four years. Did you? Yeah. The last year I was like kind of like. What position? Shortstop. And catcher. Nice. So catcher oh. for the first two years and then shortstop and left field yeah. for the second. Yeah. For the last two. Now you didn't. Okay. Let me you, let me ask you this. You didn't experiment at all when you were in college, especially no. being on a softball team. I know. Like that's like. I know. Just very traditional. Right? You're either a Kinda? lesbian or fat. And I was fat. <laughs> <laughs> I was chubby. I was kind of. I, I was definitely chubby. Like I was, I was not, not in college. Really. But. But in high school you were. No, I was skinny until I started drinking. Oh, okay. And then college, you. Yeah. I think that's pretty normal. I was a collegiate track runner in college. So there's no way I could have been. Oh, okay. So when were you chubby? Um, when I first joined the military. Oh. Like, it was like when I first started to be able to drink. Oh, okay. So, like oh, yeah. So, I, I guess that's probably the same. So, I was drinking in high school. So, yeah. I was chubby. Um, and I was playing softball. Yeah. Uh, so, no. No lesbian yeah. times. Good for you. Right? <laughs> I mean, good for me. I don't. I don't know I'm what not, good for me, but um, <laughs> I liked it. I like good it. for you. I think you should. I think everyone should. Absolutely. You know. Um. I have no interest. I don't know if maybe I should have. Mm-hmm. Just to kind of like see. Yeah. I have no interest in doing that right now. Oh yeah. Well. Um. But you never know. Shit changes, right? Mm-hmm. These older gals that like <laughs> shack up together oh, and then God. they're lesbians. You're like. Was that how it was the whole time? And they're like, no. Or were you just like, I was done with fucking I mean, dudes. Yeah. Like, I've always found females more attractive, though. Way more attractive, like, um, like looking at them. Oh, yeah. Looking. Uh, yeah. Right. And for I'd the be most like. Part, this, like their bodies and just everything yeah. else. For the most part, I just want to be like, I'm just like, how do you like look like that? Or, you know what I mean? For the most part, better. Yeah. <laughs> I'm more just like jealous. I'm not and like looking yeah. at them like in a sexy like, good way Good for you guys. Good for you guys, you know, yeah. to have that cool relationship. Exactly. Yeah. Good for you. So, okay. So high school, you got along with everyone. Got along with everyone. I mean, kind of. Um, And then I, I went, but I didn't go as much as I should have. And I didn't really, ex- I used it. Um, I didn't use it for what I should have, which was like academic. Like oh, okay. if I were to give anyone advice or my kids or whatever, I'm just gonna be like, dude, save it for college. Like. Have some fun in high school, but that is not going to be your fun time. Do you know what I mean? My fun was like, not in high school. Do really well in high school so I, that you can did. do. You should. You should. I, I should have. I didn't know that it was made a my thing. life a lot uh, harder because I didn't do well in high school. Do you know what I mean? Oh, got it. That is the foundation that, like, if you do well, if you have like good GPA, if you can like get into college, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's the foundation that, like, once you're in college everybody's partying so party mm. get to class do whatever you got to yeah. do right and you figure it out how you to, figure it out yeah. but high school like you're not even fucking good at partying you're puking in po- pools and fucking doing all <laughs> stupid shit scooping it up trying to clean it out like you're horrible at partying so don't really do it right uh-huh do you have a, a funny a party weed, maybe a funny high school party story to tell because you just said that you were like scooping up what? oh no i mean black you just blacked oh, out i mean okay. you just black out i don't know what the fucking stories are i was like i know i was like blacked out oh, okay and like you'd wake up like oh shit <laughs> but everyone is right and you're like i didn't walk not, out of the room not, that was not our high school you didn't party oh, no. okay so uh <laughs> people are so bad at partying in high school that yeah. it's like the stories aren't even they're not even funny fun. they're yeah. mostly just like pathetic oh yeah like <laughs> pathetic like, you only had two beers <laughs> yeah yeah just like drinking in my friend like the first time we drank like getting do you remember spotting where you would like spot someone to buy you uh buy you alcohol because you're too young oh, so yeah. you would stand outside either liquor stores or or grocery stores and spot so like spot someone that you think is cool enough that oh will, i never did that yeah so uh oh shit um, before like one of your friends has a fake ID or whatever, you have to like get older people. Like I can't even imagine a kid coming up to me now and asking you. asking me to buy them alcohol. Like I, what would I say that if is, I was a certain? That's age, good training to read people. Fuck yeah, right? Yeah, 
Because you have we to would check choose. by their demeanor, yeah. by, by like what they drive mm-hmm. and how they look, yeah. and if they'd be okay. Wow. If you're girls, it's easier because the guys sure. are, you know, guys will be like, all right, well, just be careful, you know. Meanwhile, they can kill themselves. But anyways, yeah. like, <laughs> just be careful. And you were like, okay. And then drank. I think we probably each had maybe four Coors Lights. Mm-hmm. Four. And just like. Decided that in her room when her parents went to sleep was the time to do it. Uh-huh. And just like puking, just like going into the into the room. Like they're like she's not gonna know, yeah. right? And especially at that age too, like you don't understand that when you drink, you're so much louder. Oh and my gosh, you like don't yeah. even know what you're doing, crashing into walls and like You're so unaware of oh, anything. You're just so bad at it. Don't <laughs> do it. <laughs> Save it for when you can handle your yeah. shit. And somehow you just handle it in college ish. Yeah, well, you're just your your body is different. Yeah. You like, I don't know. Everyone's just managing it, and I think you just suck it up. There's and more deal people with around it. that will be like, "Dude, what the yeah. fuck?" Right? Where it's like in high school, they're like, yeah, blah. yeah, like everyone's so. Ridiculous. I mean, a few years does make a difference. It really body. does. Yeah. In just like how you can metabolize alcohol, first of all, yeah. and then people around you that will be like, "Bro." Get your shit together, <laughs> dude. Correct. Like, listen, we're in college now. Listen, you can't be showing up like uh, this. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, so you, I don't did know. you know that after I didn't, high like, school? I don't love, I don't look back on high school and go like, those were the best days. Like, oh. I, this Facebook group, class of whatever my class is. Did you ever go to a class reunion? Yet? No. We I didn't really, any. like, I'm looking at these people, like, on Facebook that started this group of our class. Yeah. And I, like, don't really recognize them and i was like did i do that much drugs no they probably just changed maybe they changed um you know what i mean yeah <laughs> or could be both could be maybe both could be a, a little bit of both. of both where so i did so i <laughs> that was so my acid. Acid. that was my acid i had an acid year where i was like i would do it at school like i would go to fucking drama class yeah. they went no one was tripping notice. Who knows? Because I've never done it, so I just Who don't know how people knows? act on it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like it's not something like you could smell. It's not okay. like um, being drunk. You don't like fall over the place. You just would like, if you ask me something, like just ask me anything right now. Just a normal thing. Like, hey, Jesse, how's your day going? Um, <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's a good day, right? And like you just be like, oh, maybe she's just like a little out of it or Having tired or something right? like you wouldn't be like now you know yeah i think if you've done mushrooms or anything like sure. this you know what people like act like and, so and your look teachers like are just oblivious to it i think uh at a certain point like teachers are just trying to fucking get through the day right <laughs> and they're like our age now mm-hmm. do you know what i mean like true and they're just like dude i don't fucking know like they're you know like, what i mean go. like or this they- is my work day yeah. they probably fucking went out drinking you know yeah. what i mean like that's their work day and like there are some teachers that really fucking care and yeah. want every kid to do well and there's some that just like need you to get through yeah. the day and get the fuck out of their face so yeah. that whatever you do after that is out of their control okay so and drama class too it's like you always break into cl- like break into groups and you're like just hanging with your friends you're not really looking at the teacher or yeah. whatever but um yeah so you were in drama classes yeah for every year of high school? Um, I don't know if that's like a thing at your school. Definitely the last year. Yeah, you don't have to do it, but definitely the last year I was. Yeah. Um, did you fall in love with it when you did it? Or the last two years. Not no. really then. No. no. Um, high school drama could can really uh, deter you from <laughs> being an actor. Like, really? Usually the teachers, which mine was, was like a failed actor, and so she was just super fucking bitchy. I was just going to ask if she was and bitter. And bitter. Yeah. And like hated me maybe because i showed up to her class fucking tripping on acid all the time no <laughs> but like, She's like this i was already bitch. like i that kind of acting and that kind of um it was already not the the way that i wanted to do it sure uh, i got into acting when my parents got divorced um i was like i think it was like a little bit shy anyways and when my parents got divorced i was just like did not know how to express my feelings at all about mm-hmm. it i was just like Bleh. i just like went inward right and found this acting class by this lady named Kim Maxwell Brown mm-hmm. in my small town. Okay. She had like moved from LA and she was like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. She was like so glamorous and she was like famous and she was in some stuff, like little stuff, but she like you could see what she was from kind of thing. Like, 
Um, and she started this class where it's mostly like writing your own stuff and performing and just very uh, natural mm-hmm. acting and not like musical yeah. theater uh, okay. or projecting or like uh, it was just very much like whatever. Kind of like the basics almost, right? Yeah, um, it was almost like, but it was kind of like, therapy a little bit where it's like you write about what you're going through and then you kind of write a monologue about it and then you kind of like perform it but it's really just you talking Mm -hmm. but now we know in movies and writing it's like that's all it is right it's like marriage story it's like a whole movie about how it feels to be getting a divorce right and so that is when I fell in love with acting and like writing and that kind of real expression as gay as it may sound no but um not at all yeah so i before that i was just like i i don't want to sing i don't want to dance yeah i don't i can't even really project to the back of the fucking class and that was drama and that's drama Um, and that's like the acting that class Glee Club right or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right but that's like acting class like uh, and then you do plays that are like period really pieces or whatever top. right yeah. yeah where you have to have like an accent or Right or Shakespeare even like Shakespeare so I was just fucking say, annoying. Shakespeare is like the traditional go to. Right, so annoying. Yeah, if you like Shakespeare, we're probably not gonna be friends. No, I'm just joking. Um, Lucky for you, I don't know anything. Yeah, I mean it's it's <laughs> it's good, I guess, but yeah. it's just so that kind of acting Where makes me very thou, Romeo. Yes, yes. So. Well. But then like Romeo and Juliet done by like Baz Luhrmann, right, with Leo and fucking uh-huh. Claire Danes, like. Sure, that's very different. Somehow that worked, right? Because they toned it down. They yeah, made they it very conversational. They made it more modern. More modern. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, that's Did you, did how you I go started. to college then? Or no? Yeah, so I went to UCSB, which is like a community college in Santa Barbara, which is like probably okay. one of the nicest. Santa Barbara's a nice area. Yeah. yeah. And the, the city college is way nicer than the university. Like The university is in Goleta, which is like, middle of nowhere way out of santa barbara and it's all asians good for you good for you yeah but um uh city college is like right on the beach like you it was really hard to go to class Uh but you would like look out the window and there's fucking waves like you know what i mean that's cool it's cool but you're like or i could just go and do that especially my track record sure of making it to high school (laughs) so i did really well but they had a film program there so it was like film acting and they had a whole kind of there the acting teacher there that was teaching acting for film was like really renowned and awesome and so uh loved that and always made it to that kind of stuff and yeah. English but not all my classes right yeah and I lived in a house off campus with like all my friends that weren't Ooh. going to school that's dangerous yeah yeah so continue the party I, if, if you know if what I would have I mean. done that <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, no. so it was just like Shut not as much acid but yeah. definitely partying yeah sure yeah mm-hmm. so did you like how did you end up so with college, mm-hmm. how did you end up making your way kind of towards acting more? Or did you go, what did yeah, you have to do so between like, then? Yeah, so I mean, basically I took the route of being an actor and a bartender server. Okay. Server. So I was that. That's kind of like traditional, right? Traditional, right? Because then, and it's really common For the in LA. World, you know yeah. What I mean? <laughs> to yeah. like be waited on by a server or a bartender and yeah. pretty much every one of them is trying to be an actor or a writer or producer or something in the industry which I was uh, so I basically was again just like working class I did whatever I could do so that I could still go to auditions and be in plays and um, I did an adaptation at this so Okay, so the Kim Wax Kim Wa- Maxwell Brown, I was in her class and I kind of stayed with her forever like as an acting coach and we awesome. built a theater in Ojai where we would like a black box theater where we would perform stuff that we wrote or plays that we liked or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh we did an adaptation of This Is Our Youth there, um which is a Kenneth Lonergan play and from there I got cast in a play in LA. So once, it's a big deal, right? Yeah. I yeah. mean, it was like a repertory theater. And so it was like kind of the same deal, but in L.A. So it was like yeah. a black box, small theater in L.A. 
So I just like made it work. Like I had no job or anything, but I got cast in this fucking play. And this is like two hours away from my home, right? So it's Uh not far, but you still need to live there. Sure. So I just like moved to LA at that point, like moved in with some friends, like lived in like a closet, uh, gave blood so that I could eat, (laughs) like just did it, like made it work. And then from there, it kind of all spirals, right? Where you'll like get something from the play And then you'll get a movie and then you'll find friends that are making stuff and it all kind of comes together. But basically Uh through the whole time, I'm just serving and bartending, which is a whole nother fucking world. Right. Where'd you work at? Um, In L.A., I worked at, I mean, like a bunch of different places. Universal Grill, which is basically a dive bar. Uh I worked at Ye Rustic Inn, which anyone in L.A., whoop, whoop, you know what I'm talking about. It's like the last dive bar uh left in LA yeah. that's like actually a dive bar but did you why did you always pick the dive bars um I like think it was just like them? easier to I didn't like corporate stuff like I didn't do very uh, well and like so I had a I tried a like corporate serving job and I just like a you don't make as much money because you can't fucking work it and b you're saying like with the money and the tips and stuff a little bit but also just like being able to like you know find the people that have money and like take care of them sort of thing where it's okay, like yeah. in corporate you know because you've yeah your jobs were po- corporate too where like you don't make shit like no. all of your money is going to your bus or your runner your blah blah, blah <laughs> taxes yeah, everyone like everyone else and it's all like you have to report absolutely everything yeah. and and i just don't do well with like that kind of fucking structure where it's just yeah, like the oh my shit is like that much out like give me a fuck it's like the flare thing Okay, like how much do you want me to fucking wear? I don't know. Like yeah. I'm just, I just need to come to work and then, you know. Maybe the, maybe the whole corporate thing for me was just preparing me for the military. Probably. Or <laughs> you like, know what I mean? Or if you don't know. Because it was very uniform. Like, right. Like it was very uniform. Like, but if you don't know any other, like I started, no, at, I started at Subway. Like that was my first job, right? But if you don't know any different where there's other places that you can actually like just take care of your business mm-hmm. and like make sure you show up and yeah. that you look nice and they don't treat you like a child. Yeah. That's a way better environment. Sure. Right. Where like if you fuck up, like you're going to get in trouble. But for the most part, like they trust you to be if they hired you and they like you, mm-hmm. you're going to. That's fine. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you'll have to really fuck up in order for them to yeah. like fire you or something. You make good money, though. Uh, yeah. Serving. And serving bartending. and bartending at a dive yeah. bar because you get regulars you take care of them yeah. like you figure out how to work the cash yeah register look mm-hmm. um so <laughs> oh I, I always never a bartender but i always wanted to be one is that really funny? i oh, always yeah. wanted to be one like Me i would too. practice as a fucking child oh yeah yeah isn't that weird that that's cool. like a prestigious and they make you feel that way too oh they if you do ever when start, they're snotty uh-huh mm-hmm. and if you ever start as a job like at a job like that or yeah. if you're a bus boy like trying to move your way up or they always far make, back yeah they, they always make, make you feel, feel like it's the hardest hey i don't know if you can handle it and it's like do you know a monkey could fucking do your job <laughs> like they always they're like listen i serve and i fucking uh, make all the drinks and i look, do everything guys, else and i wash the dishes and yeah they do, they're like i basically do all your guys's job and you're like, gonna have to handle it okay <laughs> like and i make this drink and i like put the fucking orange and like this and then i like light it on fire a little bit and i put it in okay and if you can't fucking handle that you're not gonna be able to make it here because it's just some bitch that doesn't want you to take their job right so they make you feel like it's well and the thing is too when you first turn 21 and you're able to like kind of go sit up at the bar you're at the bar right you always want to you're always trying to get the attention of the bartender the bartender's the one that all the attention's on because you need obviously them to get your fucking drink yeah so it kind of in your mind was built up to be this Uh prestigious like important job thing and and everyone's sitting there like just don't piss off the bartender he won't serve you i mean they have this weird power and it gets to their head it does but for the most part anyone can make those drinks <laughs> anyone can do it right i'm here to tell you yeah tiffany you would be an amazing bartender you could do it tomorrow and run circles about around what cheesecake guy where, where was <laughs> yeah where cheese- did you want to bartend cheesecake yeah. factory yeah you got this yeah. girl like seriously it's not Look that hard but you need to make people think it's really hard yeah I can see that. So that they, but you know, there is some fucking amateurs that you need to like teach how mm-hmm. to drink. Like that was what we would like take upon ourselves is like this girl that's coming up and being like, what shot do you think I should have? Like she needs to know that you don't do that. Right. And then, oh, I've done that. <laughs> oh, for sure. We all have. Right. 
Give me your Have favorite, you done it recently? Give me, no. Oh, give it, me your you, favorite drink. Or, you can read oh, the yeah. room. Like, if there's not a lot of people at the bar and the bartender looks bore- uh, bored, like, they want to tell you what their drink is. Okay, well, I'll tell you this right now. The last, t- mm, the last time that I went up to a bartender, which was probably two years ago, and said, hey, it's my friend's birthday slash bachelorette party. Yeah. I don't really ever take shots. So I said, make us a shot. And I was very specific. I said, make us a shot that is vodka, right, yeah. is the alcohol. It's not too sweet. It's not too strong, yeah. Um, and, but that can still get us fucked up. And I don't know what he gave us, but I sure was puking in the alley. Are you serious? <laughs> oh god, I would have given you kamikaze. Oh god, I think so fucked up. Really? It was a. It, I guarantee it was more than a double. It was definitely like it was like a drink shot, right? And I. So he was. And of course, with after you. the wine, I took more. Well, I, he was having a blast with us. Like every time, I'm sure. Every time his girls go back there to California, he's always like, "Where's Tiffany?" And they're like, That's "She awesome. doesn't live here." Mm. Um. But yeah, I was not feeling good later on. Oh, for sure. And like, that's fine, right? Yeah. But it's the that's people that me. like... I if wouldn't it's say that's super, on him. Yeah, no. If it's like a super busy bar and you go up to the bar oh. and you finally get the bartender's attention, like... You have your, have your shit ready what, to go. Know what you want. Yeah. So this is the biggest thing that like will piss off a bartender is like they finally get to you and then you turn to your friends and ask them what they want, mm. right? Or like, this is what I want, guys. Like... Uh uh-uh they're gonna leave you they're never gonna come back to you whatever so it's like if it's busy if it's not busy fuck them they can deal with your shit but like if it's a super busy bar which is like uh, the last places that i worked were like insanely busy yeah when you come up there know exactly what you want don't have it be a mojito don't have it be something blended and get your fucking shit together yeah 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 because you have to have your money ready have your money ready don't be then then they make well, the drinks and then be like, guys, can I? D-? Yeah. yeah. Like, have your money or you're paying for all of it or whatever Why it is. Why not Mijito? Because I have to muddle it and that's a fucking long ass drink. Yeah. Yeah. And look, if it's a bar, again, read the room. If it's sure. a bar that it's not super busy and people are eating at the bar and things like this, get a mojito. They have mojitos for a reason. But then when it's like party time, club, later in the night, nobody's eating anymore. Just get a fucking vodka soda or whatever. Fuck right. Rebel. Vodka Red Bull. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. (laughs) I was told that, actually, you can tell me if this is true or not, that uh, depending upon what you order to drink, you are judged by the bartender. Yeah. But not not if it's like a beer, a vodka soda, vodka Red Bull, like those, those. Well, because I remember reading something. Daiquiri. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it was like the blowjob shot was for like, mm-hmm. right, like the hoes wanting to like show off for But that's someone. like a bachelorette thing. But one of but them yeah. also said too, and I've always been super self-conscious of, conscious of this the minute I read it, was uh, vodka rebel. It basically meant that the person who was ordering it was some like immature college chick who didn't know how to drink yet. And I'm like, that's me. <laughs> that's that's me fair. Still. But what they don't know is that you can handle it. That's Most the, people yeah. can't handle. Well, people have their certain drinks, yeah, right? Yeah. They're like go-to things, and that yeah. was like the one that just still. Look, hits. maybe we'll work on a couple like drinks, maybe to like move. I don't you know into- what the fuck we had the other night, but the cranberry vodka and the splash of soda yeah. water did not like that. It tasted like butthole. I thought you liked it. You said no. it was good. It at that one place, at but the, the other one place, place it was oh, not. Okay, it was, yeah. I don't know. It just hit and miss, that right? Place. That's why Vodka Rebel, you can't go wrong. Even if you put the shittiest vo- p- pop off vodka in it. It's true. Red Bull mask it. No, you're right. Because then you don't have to worry about ratios. Yeah, if you do That's a splash thing. of, don't do a splash of. Correct. I'm kind of fancy when it comes to, like, I love extra dirty martinis. Well, right? that's like, I don't know yeah, why I love them, but it's a sophisticated drink. They're like, hit. If you they're hit miss that, places, though. That's true. Like some places they taste like booty hole. Other places they taste delicious. It's true. And sometimes booty holes do taste delicious. Hey, look, sometimes you're in the mood for an earthy booty yeah. hole. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> no, that's don't a diss sophist- it. Like yeah. if someone orders a dirty martini from me, I'm like, oh, they know how to drink. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, it sucks. You hate to like do the sure. ice in the fucking martini glass and do the yeah. whole fucking thing. And it's kind of like a. Because it's between those two is what I drink. I like it. You're yeah. sophisticated. Thanks. College girl. Let's get back on you. Because <laughs> I want to talk more about you. Shut the fuck up. I didn't do that in college. That's the way I am now. Oh, okay. okay. I was a trashy girl in, in college. Oh, good. We'll get to that. Um, good. So you moved to LA. Yeah. You're making it happen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So how did it all like kind of start? So you're bartending and uh, yeah, waitressing during it all. Doing the so thing. where what was your like your big break like what was the moment where you were kind of like I made it this is it like I this is it's happening well 
Um, it was a combination of things, but I was just like auditioning and not getting shit. Like I, I am, I think that there's only one thing that I say I'm really good at yeah. and it's acting. It's like, that's the only thing that I, I mean, will I confidently a lot of <laughs> say, but like, I won't say that ever, yeah. but with acting, I'm like, I can fucking do that shit. Yeah. Um, and it's the only thing that I will say that, but I am a different type of actor and pretty subtle and real. So it doesn't always translate in auditions, but if you watch like the tape back, if there's, um, if they're, they usually do it on film. So you're like read with a casting director and there's a camera. Mm -hmm. So if they ever take the time to watch the film, then they get my whole shit, but it doesn't really translate right in front of you Yeah, from what I've heard. Um, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's not, that's why I'm not getting stuff. Um, and I've gone through a couple different, uh, agents and things like this. And it just like, wasn't really working out. And then I got together with this group of people, this guy, uh, Joel Hodge, um, Evan Glodell, Tyler Dawson. Um, and we kind of were just making stuff like making shorts, like doing the thing before people like now people know mm -hmm. that you just make your own stuff. Right. Yeah. Don't wait for someone to cast you in something. Don't wait for someone to do it. You take your fucking camera phone, whatever, and make a movie. We know that now. Back then it was sort of weird. Yeah. Um. So we just like started making shorts and making little shows. And finally, uh, Evan wrote a movie like wrote a full length movie and we all were like dude are we gonna fucking film a movie this is insane yeah. right like it's just so much money and so much time and oh, it's sure. with no budget literally zero budget it's kind of crazy like you're it's never gonna like do anything but I guess just like do it mm -hmm. so we shot a movie 90 like over 90 days um on our own money own dime friends wow. like uh, you know, own gas money, all of this. Shot this movie. I mean, it was mostly theirs. It was like Evan and Joel's movie, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I was the main character in it, so I was just acting. But you still need to be invested because you're not getting paid. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like taking away from work, and you have to like do all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so finally got that done. They finally edited it, and it got into Sundance, which is in. Same. That's a huge deal. Huge deal. Yeah. No budget. Like, by the way, now they don't actually get real independent films in Sundance. It's all like big budget stuff. Oh, like okay. they just but don't back really. Then. Back then it was like all real independent yes, films I got that. in Sundance. Right. Yeah. And it was like, that means that you're a really good independent film. Yeah. And everyone that went and then people would go to Sundance to try I and find seeing... new talent. Yeah. Um, what was the movie called? It's called Bellflower. That's awesome. Yeah. And so we went, that was like, you know, f as an actor, if you go to Sundance, you're like, oh my God, we did like it. we fucking did it. And we yeah. all were just looking around like, this is fucking crazy. And we were like the ragtag group of kids that mm -hmm. like had no money. We all drove to Utah in a fucking car, like together smashed, like in the backseat, like, yeah. and everyone wanted to come, right? No one's invited, but we all go. And but doesn't um, that make it even sweeter? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because of all and of we that. Had, yeah, for sure. And like went to Sundance and then from there um, we got like audience choice award and like it kind of grew from there. And the Beastie Boys, Adam Yock from the Beastie Boys had a production company called Oscilloscope mm -hmm. and they bought us Dude. at Sundance. So we were the, the cool moment was like there's an award ceremony at the end and uh -huh. it's all like they give out like best, you know, best picture and like you know, best actress and all of this for the sun, for the festival. And there was audience choice and like, we didn't get audience choice, but at the moment that we saw on the screen that it wasn't us, we got the confirmation from our agent that oscilloscope bought us for an undisclosed amount. I'll wow. Say. And we're like, Holy <gasps> fuck. So like, that's what you want. Yeah. That one that got fucking bet the audience choice. Well, uh, yeah. You can't even find it now. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. nobody bought it and distributed it. So basically they bought us so they could like distribute it and put it everywhere. It was on Showtime and all these oh my like, gosh, yeah, really? it's like they put it out there for the world. Yeah. Right. And make the DVDs and send you on all these things. And then we were in South by, which is like another awesome fucking 
film festival mm-hmm. in Austin. It's like amazing. It just sort of like went from there. The Beastie Boys like Dude. took us under their wing and like fucking. <laughs> did I they was make hanging you sing out. all their songs before they? I joined? probably did because I was a little fucking idiot. Like we were just partying no! the whole Sorry. time. Yeah, they t- uh, we did something in New York. Like we did a screening with them in New York, and we went with them, like all of the Beastie Boys, uh-huh. to their dive bar in their hometown. Like we were just like That's fucking so awesome. living the dream, right? Yeah. I don't even know if we realized it was the dream Probably at the time. Not. Probably not. But now looking back. But that's what makes, it's like this Billie Eilish. Yeah. We were like her where we didn't even know, we didn't even realize the gravity of it. Mm-hmm. We were just like, fuck you. Yeah. Like, this is our life, right? And we're just like partying and hanging out. And that must be part of the appeal of it, right? Sure. We're like, they don't even understand like how fucking cool they are. Yeah. Like, they're just little idiots. <laughs> Um, but it was fun. It was but a fun year. people probably loved you guys more because of that. Maybe, maybe, right? You were right? so like, down like, earth and humble and didn't realize what you guys had at your fingertips at the and time. And we were down. It. Yeah. And we were down for whatever. It's yeah. like, whatever party, like we'll party the hardest. We'll party with fans. We'll part, like we'll do all yeah. the things. You guys we'll weren't say too good all for everyone. Things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like these stranger, ki- stranger things, kids around. And they're just like, they seem like they're all 30 yeah. years old. Like they're all just like totally dressed up perfectly. And like, they're a they're like 15 years yeah. old, right? So we were definitely the opposite of that. Um, and then from there, uh, kind of came back home and it was sort of like, all right, I guess we're back I was to in a movie and like yeah. people cared about it, but like people care about it in the independent world and sure. nowhere else, right? Oh, okay. So you get home and you're like, I was fucking famous. Do you even know? <laughs> and they're like, nope we don't know like we weren't at sundance Serve so me we my beer yeah exactly <laughs> yeah i would get recognized at my serving job and it was like so did you embarrassing because you're like that's I'm fucking serving. cool no it was cool but, cool, but like yeah. they're like where do i know you right and they're like i'm giving them a drink at the bar they're like where do i know you and i don't want to say uh, as in a movie right but they like finally get it and they're like bellflower we saw bellflower i was like oh awesome I need to watch that now. And I'll, yeah, I'll get you your change. You oh, know what I mean? It's what you, yeah. But that's what it is. And that's, in LA, it was cool because that's just what everybody does. Like, the, sure. I'm not fucking famous because I did one movie and I'm not for sure not rich because mm-hmm. we didn't get paid from it. Mm-hmm. Like, production got paid and like investors got paid and stuff like this. But sure. like, us as the people that made the movie didn't really get paid that much. Yeah. Um, your payment would just be, basically kind of getting recognized and then maybe having a movie right? Else, right yeah like going to sundance sure like you need to Being get exposed. yourself there uh-huh and that was one thing from all of that that i want people to realize like when people go to these like when they have smaller movies and they have to go to these like film festivals or red carpets like you it costs so much money to God. do that and you have to do it all yourself you're not fucking rich just because you know who someone is right mm-hmm. you don't get paid for being famous you get paid for that one job that you movie, did yeah. and then you have to like get yourself to the award ceremony and like get a dress that's worth fucking five hundred dollars or like even the Oscars like they don't get paid to go to the Oscars like mm-hmm. that person got paid for what they did in the movie and that's it. And then you need to like so it's not a poor person's game for mm-hmm. sure. Like you have to have a little bit of money and if, or you if you're don't, big enough, you have like connections, right? Yeah. Where and people, people want to give you yes. stuff. But because you have to get to a point that where that's yeah. a very competitive, I'm yeah. sure. Because rich people field. get free stuff thrown at them. Whereas sure. if you're poor and you can't fucking afford it, nobody's fucking Unless dressing people you. People are going to be looking at you, right? right? But they don't know that yeah. until you like have enough money, anyways. Mm-hmm. And you're like, they just get free shit, even yeah. though they have millions in the bank, right? And then I'm sitting there like trying to borrow money so that I can get a dress yeah, that I don't fucking... look like a homeless person yeah. on the fucking red carpet at this thing, right? Mm-hmm. So, anyways, what was next? So, you moved from there. So, you got picked up by the Beastie Boys. Yeah. So, but that was just like a year of your life, right? And then it's kind of like, then it's out there and that's it. It's not like the Beastie Boys keep fucking calling you. That'd be awesome. They just do it for the promotion. Yeah. And they think, they thought that we would be like um, a good way to like promote it because we would just go out and party with everyone. So, they would just have us come. Other people love that. Yeah. They would just have us come to screenings and then make like a weird party afterwards and they would just have us all. And we're like five or six kids basically uh old enough to drink but just mm-hmm. like barely and um would just go and party with everyone talk to everyone and like not care so they were like it was a good way to promote the yeah. movie so they kind of use use us for that did you do any movies next after that so after that was 
50k in a call girl, a call girl. So that was like <laughs> pretty like much <laughs> call, call girl. Oh, because I want to say uh, in Bellflower, there's this scene that I eat crickets in. Do you really I eat real crickets in them? And it's like this contest that we do in a bar. Wait, so, you really ate crickets? Yeah, yeah. Um, That's so funny because I was in live room. ones. Yeah, that you can like feel their legs and uh-huh. everything, and they like pop out. You do that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. That was the only time that I've done that ever. Well, I was going, I've thought of different things that we could do, you know, uh, podcast wise. Oh, and yeah. I would absolutely love to have you eat um, insects. Well, you would have Emery's to- here. And I'll do it with Oh, you. Emery's I want to do. Emery's, And yeah. that's been suggested for but sure. Like, and I'll do that. too. Like, I'll easily tell you what you can and cannot eat. And then, you know, we'll do it in a better way. Where if not, they're like, not alive, I'm down. Because oh, I've be, already alive, done. We'll kill it. So in at South by they that's so awesome though I love I have a little bit more respect for you now right I do that's and here's cool a, here's another well so weird, I didn't uh, do really well with the promotional thing that they did so they did like in South by they did this like promotional thing where like I uh was going against one of the like bigger guys in Austin Tim League he like owns all the movie theaters and stuff and mm-hmm. he wanted to do this contest with me of cricket eating the same way that we did bring it yeah. oh bring it maybe but. <laughs> They, I'm like, yeah, sure, totally. Because like in the movie, we just put them right out of the bag, like, uh-huh. and just had them in the like aquarium type thing, so sure. I could just grab them like that. What they did at this promotion thing that I didn't know is they had them all in the thing, but left them in the like aquarium type thing for like two days nope. until. No, nope. so you don't they do had, that. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> so it was like dirt and. You're gonna have bugs shit, and shit. shit. Yep. It was just all over shit. Yep. And we were drinking already and everything. And like, so when I fucking grabbed that handful, like I, I could not fucking do yeah. it. It was loud enough and crazy enough that I could like get away with like spitting it and whatever. But like, I rather it was eat all day long the most disgusting thing. A fresh picked bug off the grass, absolutely. And all day long, and that's what it was in the sat movie in the aquarium. And that's another thing too. I just literally go outside in the back and grab them for us to eat. Yeah, because it'd be so much cleaner then. Oh, well, then it's just a fucking bug. But this was just like, dude, no. Okay, so. Yeah, well, good on you. It doesn't always work out. Um, So you did 50K. So next was 50K and a call girl. So this is was some of the questions people are asking. Well, people want to know how you met Ross. So Ross had seen Bellflower. Uh, Someone had sent him the trailer or whatever. And and he went. I guess so. (laughs) And how could you not? I know. Can you blame him? I mean, I haven't seen a movie, but I've seen you. Yeah. So so he saw it and he was in the middle of writing 50K and a call girl. And he like couldn't figure out like this last part or something like that. And he said he saw the movie and just went home and like finished the whole thing that night, called his um, casting director and was like, get this girl in. And I was so like at that point, like my mom was the only contact that I had because I like was in between agents and stuff. And like she would just get scripts that were sent and just kind of be like, well, I think this is good or this is bad or whatever. Like, check it out. Oh, cool. So she sent me. She was like, I think this is perfect it feels like it was written for you I'm like, yeah okay mom and like read it and was like oh shit I mean it kind of feels like it was yeah um I didn't know that it was I was just like dang this person like feels like they feels like they know me or something yeah and um obviously inspired inspired by yeah. and so when I went to I went to the um casting and it's usually like a bunch of people in the room and I went to this casting office like downtown where all they are and um I was the only one in the like waiting room I was kind of like okay that's fucking weird like it's always a room full of blondes right that look exactly like you if not taller prettier (laughs) bigger smaller like you're just like all right well we're all just versions of each other and there was nobody in there and I went in and auditioned and then (laughs) they were like okay well you know like do you want do you want to like talk about you know like doing it talk about uh, the job like or go get a drink or something it was like two it was like the director and ross and then the casting director and they had it on film they had me do like a a bunch of stuff and i was like all right well i guess i'm gonna like go and they're like okay well did you want to maybe talk more about the movie or whatever um and i was like yeah fine like um i just need to take these fucking heels off and put some sandals (laughs) and they were like you got the part like right when you said that basically because they were like that's the girl uh-huh. i mean i did good in the audition sure. thankfully they but they were like right then it was like oh okay like this girl is the girl yeah. right so we went across the street and had like a couple beers 
smoked a cigarette because we were all smoking at that time mm-hmm. like everyone yeah um smoked a cigarette and then i left and they had called me and were like okay well uh do you want this part i was just like how that never happens yeah. like it just doesn't ever fucking happen like that it goes through your agent and then your agent's like you know like well they're in between a couple people sure. and da, da 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 like is it gonna work for you whatever so i found out later that i was the only one that auditioned and <laughs> ross just called and was like find this girl she's the girl yeah um that's gotta make you feel good yeah right? it was, like that's really like wow i'm honored yeah yeah it was good and that's how amazing you are a For testament sure. to to you to me yeah um and so we the movie was a 30-day shoot across the u.s so i had to like be cool with that and i was like talking to the i did get an agent to do the actual deal because i like you need to negotiate money yeah. and contracts and stuff and so i like had and i was like dude like that's fucking crazy and he's like look i looked him up like he seems pretty legit like it's not like they're gonna take you and fucking rape you or anything Who, like ross yeah, because and yeah, so he, he looked up the company. Yeah. He's like, he's done a couple other things that are super funny, and like, I think it'll be good. But let's just negotiate. I mean, he did not negotiate well for me at all. Oh, that's because I found out later that I could have gotten so much more. Oh. But my agent was like, I wouldn't push it, you know. And I'm like, why not? I'm gonna be on the road with God knows who for fucking thirty days. Yeah, like negotiate some fucking money, dude. Yeah. Anyways, thanks a lot, agent. Thanks a lot, agent, Dick for having bag. so much fucking. Uh, he he didn't know any of this either, though. Had oh. he known that I was the only person that was in there and the only one they wanted, oh. we could have gotten a shit ton. Oh, but yeah. I like the way I like that I didn't gouge production, whatever. <laughs> so then he proceeded husband. to uh, me to me uh, the entire time. Who Ross? <laughs> Thankfully, it worked out. If I didn't like him, it would have been a fucking nightmare. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It was like by the second week, I'm like all of a sudden in the same room. Like oh. we had already been like kind of flirting, whatever, and like the way that the movie's written is, you're just like full on like in falling in love with and, someone. And he was the, the actor whole- too. Yeah. Oh, okay. So he was the other guy, and the boss, and the writer, and the fucking producer, and everything. It was Harvey Weinstein? Do no, I'm joking. He, do you think he did it? As in. Like part of him. No, was, I think I'm just so irresistible. He didn't mean to do it, but I'm just like, if you meet me, you fall in love with me. <laughs> do you think no that he per- he picked you too? Not just because you inspired him and because you were an amazing actress mm-hmm. and because he knew you'd be great for that position. But do you think also selfishly he was like, I there is something about this woman that I fucking love and this would be really cool. If- I don't think he knew that right no, away. Okay. No, no. I think that like once again like. I will win you over with my personality and it may not be right away, Mm -hmm. but at a certain point you'll fall in love with me. I'm getting you. You know what I mean? You got me. You got me hooked on Instagram. You got me. But like, uh, yeah. So I think I want to think that it wasn't like (laughs) he hired me to be his wife. No, no, no. no, I'm not saying that. But maybe. But I'm saying, I wonder if there was even like an inkling of him being like. Yeah, because that was me. Like even uh, in Bellflower, like that was I really like this chick. Yeah, yeah. And I could see myself also liking her, which is a win-win because she's amazing for this role. She's a fucking terrific actress. She inspires the fuck out of me. All this, you know, like she'd be perfect for this role, but also like I kind of am crushing on her. Yeah, yeah. Because she's irresistible. You know what I mean? We hung out. I don't know if that's how it was, but like we hung out before, like a couple times before we were, because you got to be comfortable sure. with someone. So we like went to dinner or just chill dinner, like a nachos, not anything fucking yeah. crazy and um, hung out that night. And then we were just like calling each other yeah. and ended up just like talking on the phone all the time. And like, I don't know. I think it grew yeah. from that. Well, obviously. And yeah. then you like <laughs> go on this thing and you like really jump out of a plane and you really fly migs and you really like take mushrooms and you re- like everything in the movie is real so yeah. we're basically like doing all these crazy things that as you know from the bachelor yep bonds you they together do. they really do when you get in put in so those look he me too'd me he psychologically <laughs> uh bachelored me and here we are and I think another question you had was, how do I deal with him? Well, wait, 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 don't, don't put it on me. People ask this. That's what I'm saying. You yeah, other, yeah. Another yeah, question wrote, that I they had, down, yeah. not so you. So people... You know um, Ross. No, yeah. People go... Some people want to know... Yeah, well, now they know how you met. And they also asked, too, that if um, Ross is funny all the time. Um, nope. Or is it just on the podcast? I don't really think he's and- that funny, though. 
No. People always be like, oh my God, you must just be laughing all day. I'm like, I don't, I don't usually laugh. No, I'm joking. I wonder, I guarantee people think the same thing with him though, right? That people are probably like, dude, you're married to Jesse. You're probably laughing and giggling all the time. I don't, I don't think they think think that you i know? think i mean because you are really funny oh thanks you know what um I, mean? I i don't like try as hard as he does <laughs> look i love ross we all love ross yeah. right but ross is ross uh-huh. and you know he is always if, if people want to know like oh, are you just laughing did you know ross time? was ross when you like did the movie with him and you like had met him and you guys were starting to like kind of become a thing yeah i mean it took me longer was he like ross? it took me longer too with him oh okay to like get to a place of like okay i understand you i like you because i was just like you are a lot you're kind of an asshole Mm -hmm. and you're a lot Mm -hmm. like it's a lot yeah but he grew on you obviously yeah obviously yeah or he you know again he's psychological i I don't know what (laughs) i mean i may still be like it might be stockholm syndrome a little bit still still i mean like i don't know i might snap out of it one day and be like (laughs) what where am i what happened (laughs) no I'm just joking. <laughs> joking. So, no, so wait, wait. After 50K and a call girl, mm-hmm. right? So then what happens? Like, were you guys like a thing then? Um, Was it like official? Yeah, kind of. Thing? I mean, yeah. Um, Kind of. I mean, you have to come back to LA and like, you know, I had some like, yeah. I'm, uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We had, a, we had, a, we, we had ups and downs. I think like any relationship. Oh God. Yeah. How where you, it just start? started like that and then i'm sh- it's kind of like coming back well, from the bachelor on, oh my god you guys you know? started on a very world, and it was like yeah. we're out to dinner we're traveling the u.s we're doing all this stuff and then you get home and it's like real life yeah and so we definitely it was growing real pains normal sh- life you normal life boring normal life right life together. Yeah. yeah we're like you're not doing something crazy every second yeah and there's not production and cameras around you right. so like you guys yeah. are living on a high yeah and of so all this shit. yeah and so Thankfully, like when we got got it together and found our like groove, groove and, yeah. and like broke up and got back together and all of that, which I think is a good thing. I think so too. Um, like your friend, like I think you need to like break up and really know. Yeah, sometimes you get a lot what more clarity. You want, yeah, and I think we both did, and um, and eventually got to the point where we moved away from LA. I mean, we moved in together right before, but we were both just kind of like. I don't know if this is what we want to do. We definitely don't want to like live in LA forever. We don't want to like just be trying to get acting roles mm-hmm. and like making movies like in this way forever. So we moved away um, from LA, got married, had a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, not in that order. <laughs> um, we did it the other way around, the okay. sinful way. Um, whatever. Okay. No, the shotgun way. I mean, we're engaged. Yeah. And then we got pregnant and then we so obviously married. Uh, accident yeah 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 um because i don't know and i've said this before like i don't know if i was like planning it out and trying i'm definitely the person that's like it needs to be i need to have like a house i need I to know. have enough money i need to have and you this know what? and this and this You're and like i would never, never do it yeah and so now the way that it happened is the best for me because yeah. even at that time i didn't even know if i wanted like, I knew I wanted kids, but it was so, like, far away, it mm-hmm. felt like, that I was like, eh, someday. Yeah. Right? And it's the L.A. mentality, too. And I was, like, 30, going, oh, someday. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're like, when? Yeah. When? <laughs> like, by the way, <laughs> you don't have eggs forever, and you know that now. Yeah. But, like, um, so it was definitely the best way for that to happen. And then after that, we started making our own movies, and... You and made Ross Helen Keller versus Night Wolves, and yeah, that's cool to do just, together. Yeah, or was it was it hard to work with him? Oh, with your spouse? Yeah, I just think it's always hard. I I do too. That's I why I asked. It's always hard. Like, um, and we're dealing with it now, where it's like we we work together all day. That's what I'm saying. We it's go just home. Like no we break. talk about work. I know. So we we and recently need to you know have been talking that like we need to. Even if there's something we need to talk about work wise, work needs to be it needs work. to be at the office. Like, mm-hmm. and we're if working taking, on that. Yeah. It's hard though. It's and really I think hard. Everyone, it's easier said than done. Everyone that works with their spouse has the exact same complaint slash mm-hmm. problem, right? 
which is like you got to have you have to be able to go home and be a safe and space. bitch about your boss right yeah he's your husband <laughs> or whatever right has, or business yeah. partner it yeah has to be a safe, my dad would tell me that all the time home right? needs to be like, like a safe yeah home needs to be like a safe spot for yeah. you and your husband yes and you can't he wants to take off the armor of the day yes and leave it at work and come home and be be vulnerable or be emotional or just be just like not talk right talk about work yeah he doesn't have to be like one of the brute dudes who's still yeah, fucking yeah, 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 just yeah. dealing with tax or shit for right sure. and hear about work and for yeah, sure i get it yeah so we're working on that but we have basically just worked together since we've got married Jeez. Okay, so you guys Doing did movies and Helen Keller mm-hmm. versus a werewolf versus Nightwolf. Vol- yeah. versus Nightwolf. I need mm-hmm. to watch these movies. I'm by Helen the way. Keller in that. Are so, you? Yeah, I had these contacts and like weird scar makeup. Oh my god, it's really, it's actually really fun. Is it? And funny and ridiculous. Uh huh. And like uh, Ross humor. Okay, I need to watch that one for sure. It is good. Yeah. I would say watch that one for sure. And then from that. We kind of get a little bit into present day in that, like, Jared Taylor saw um, Ross's stuff. Okay, so this doesn't ask. Yeah, and he wanted to come out and be in Helen Keller and, like, talk to us about, like, making movies. He wanted to be in the movie? Well, he wanted to just, like, you know, he loved, they love movies and Uh they love the whole process and they just, like, want to be a part of it, right? So he came out to LA and I met him there. Ross kind of, like, you know, put him in the movie and him and Matt actually in Rocco, um, which were like Article 15 guys. And yeah. they just like wanted to like be around it because they had never either been in or been around feature movies. It's different now. Like they're sure. full on making hardcore shit. But at that time, they um they were kind of trying to transition from YouTube videos. To yeah, that. YouTube vid- videos and just veteran based stuff to actually melding it with like Hollywood. Mm hmm. And from that came Range 15, which is, like, what we all did together. Now, did Jared just reach out to Ross without knowing him and just yeah. be like, came in? Yep. Yeah. That's so That's right. what he does. I know. It is what he does. Right? That's what I was asking. And we're like, who is this guy? And, like, Ross was like, well, I'm just going to hear him out and talk yeah. to him or whatever. And That's they cool. ended up, like, really getting along because everyone gets along with Jared, right? Mm-hmm. Like, when you talk to him, you're like, oh, okay. You're and like, he has you're... all these ideas. And yeah. you're like, all right. Um, and for from that like that's when they did range 15 yeah so then and then they were like hey yeah we want you in it yeah so they uh one of matt's favorite movies was 50k and a call girl as far as like because he's he is emo i'm yeah he's actually emo emo. right yeah and so uh he really liked that and um they thought i was like good actress so they wanted me they wanted some actors mixed in with military so it was going to be just all military but you actually have to have it be you yeah, know balanced balanced mm-hmm. a little bit so i was one of the actors basically and everyone else was like military ex-military um that worked on the movie and that was in the movie so mm-hmm. it was a really amazing experience and kind of got me into um thinking about people in the military in a different way because you know from california or just oh, complete we- civilian like you just don't i don't know you, you don't know understand you know, too, right? yeah and what what the world shows you, what the news shows you, or what exactly you, uh, what you think, or what you're how you're raised. That's and at it. that point, it was like they were either wounded, mm-hmm. PTSD, mm-hmm. right? They're all like wounded, or they're like these crazy heroes that are like, do you know what I mean? And there's no in between of like, oh, oh you're, you're just normal. like a normal person. You haven't been to combat. You're just kind of like that's your job, and uh-huh. you did this yeah. and like went to school on like mil- You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so it's so uh, embarrassing to say no. that like I didn't know that like it's just like oh you could just like be it's a very small world that not a lot of people know about right unless you've lived a- around it in it because of yeah. family or friends or whatever yeah. yeah and then working on that movie I was just like oh yeah like why wouldn't you hire a veteran for everything <laughs> you want to do I mean Talk about like being on time mm-hmm. and like knowing all the lines, being fucking prepared and mm-hmm. being on time. Like, is that not <laughs> what you fucking know how to do? No yeah. one I know knows how to fucking do that. Well, right? nowadays it's a little bit more difficult. So it was just like, right? oh, and especially in Hollywood, right? So it was yeah. like, oh my god, like I was the late one, of course, always, and like you know, yeah, and just like not bitching about anything, just like knowing your shit, knowing my lines as mm-hmm. well as theirs. Um. And just working really hard and being really grateful for the whole thing, it 
turned my mindset and was just like, dude, Hollywood fucking sucks. Like, did it? You know, yeah. where it's just like, it's just such superficial bullshit. Mm-hmm. And the way that we made that movie and how excited everyone was to make it and be in it and even just be an extra in the background yeah. made it be like, okay, like that's how it should be. Yeah. And if we're going to do anything again, either make a movie or anything, it's going to be like that. It's not going to be this fucking bullshit. So mm-hmm. it just really changed my whole perspective of like what the fuck I was doing. And it kind of made it like stupid a little bit. Uh, well, no. Not but stupid. You had, but, but you had a very different view of yeah, it. Yeah. And right? I was in L.A. And it's just like superficial and like just no. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fake and nobody. Every, it's cooler I mean, gonna to gonna be ha- like. You're going to have it everywhere. But I'm sure it's very. uh concentrate it in LA it's concentrated in LA yeah. and it's like cooler it's like the game they have to play right yes yeah. part of it all. yes you it can't seems. act too excited about something then you're fucking thirsty and then you yeah. don't get the fucking job and then someone Jeez. that's acting cooler about it down the street is gonna get it you know like that's like it's more it's better there to like act cool about something than to be fucking excited yeah like uh I hated that so, that's, yeah, that's annoying because you're like, I just want to be myself. I just want to be excited. Like, like why can't I even like Sundance? It's like, don't be too fucking excited. Like, just be fucking cool. Like, you have to act like you've been there and you're going to be there. Oh you know what I mean? Gosh, like, I've heard this exact Yeah, because then my you job, seem, man. Right. No, I hated it and I didn't do it. Right. I was just like, I don't care. I don't care. You're going to be fucking excited about yeah. shit. So yeah. that's how you got to know the guys. So I know that's that you so, got to know the yeah. guys. And then, and then how did the whole podcast, because people were asking that too, like how the whole podcast so thing. I, I know you were in it. Right. Um, I wasn't in the podcast, so you like in the podcast? I was just no, not not that podcast, but you were kind of in the podcast realm, right? Yeah. Well, I was just like obsessed mm. and started listening to. I know some people are asking. Uh, I started listening to Mark Marin. That was like my gateway okay. podcast, and he just does these really real interviews where people, just, for some reason, just open up and talk about everything, like even things they're not supposed to talk about, and like you know, like if you're publicist. It's it's an interview show that like their publicists aren't allowed to oh. have any say in, right? They're just in a garage, just Mark Marin and them, mm-hmm. um, and they just say whatever. And he somehow gets out of people like obviously they feel comfortable with him, yeah, yeah. Or I think they know that they have to answer questions, oh, right? Like yeah, questions. like you can't like with our show, like we'll give you two things that you can't talk about, but anything else, like you can't sit here and not. Be like, oh, I can't talk about that. Oh, I can't talk about that. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's a, like that. Mm-hmm. He's like, get the fuck out. Like, I'm not airing that, you yeah. know? And so when you go on his show, you know that it's Marin. Mm-hmm. Like, you have to open up. You have to. Um, but it's also going to propel your career yeah. to the next level because you're Mark Marin. Cool. Mm-hmm. So I started listening to that. Then the guys were like, wanted to start a podcast. I'm like, you fucking should, dude. Like, this is the next big thing as far as like entertainment yeah it's the it's the next thing that or the only thing right now that you can not censored not censored yeah that's real like this is fucking crazy i was like this is crazy Mm -hmm. um i hadn't really been into rogan at that time because rogan was kind of a meathead to me Mm -hmm. and in the beginning he really was no he was like he has definitely all i knew of rogan was uh fear factor yeah Host of Fear Factor mm-hmm. and like the meathead MMA guy. Yeah. And he definitely has transformed himself and yes. show he shows a lot more of himself. Yes. Which you're like, oh my God, I love you. You're so well rounded. Yeah. Well, I think he had daughters. But before he had daughters, okay, that too, yeah. he would like, he would interview like Amy Schumer and just mm-hmm. like be a fucking dick. Yeah. He was just like a dick dude. Mm-hmm. And you're like, fuck you. He w- yeah. He was and like the dude's dude when he yeah. like, he's like secretly oh, like, like putting going her after people. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And she was like, well, no. And like, she held her own, but at the same time, it's his show, and he just was a dick. Yeah. So that's the, that's what was out there. Like, Rogan does so much better now. Um, he's crossed over to a bunch of different, you know, realms. But at that time, it was fucking Rogan. Mm-hmm. Um, so they start, the guys started a podcast, Drinking Bros, and Ross um, did that with him, and I – was editing like sound editing i like taught myself how to do that because i wanted to be a part of it good for you do you know what i mean yeah. like um and they didn't really know that i was editing <laughs> they just said it was an editor but anyway yeah um because i wanted to be a part of it and i was you know i had a kid and i wanted to like 
still kind of be work but yeah. I didn't want to work work you know what I mean like I was doing hair and it wasn't really great and I was like anything I can do to be a part of this and that was what five years ago yeah well, I think 2015 yeah, yeah 15 14 yeah so just taught myself how to do all the things behind the scene because I just love podcasting mm-hmm. so much and lo and behold it's like the most lucrative uh, best thing for Black Rifle, best thing for anybody's business. Like, it's been, and it's getting bigger, don't you think? Podcasting. Oh, uh, yes. So, like, everyone's it's, doing it now. It's even, like, it's even going to get bigger than it is right now. Yeah. But imagine five years ago, if you tell people you had a podcast, they were like, well, even still kind of now. Yeah. A little bit more. Same. But it's becoming a little bit more normalized. Yeah. I would say. Because they're starting to realize that there's like well, they're even mentioning it on TV. celebrity or yeah. like reality yeah. TV stars are saying like, "Hey, I have this podcast yeah. now. They're exactly. doing it on The Bachelor and exactly. all these other things, and now there's popular podcasters, and it's like a thing. It's starting to become more of a thing, exactly. But it's still pretty unknown, which I kind of like with a lot of people as it continues to grow because yeah. it will. Yeah. So, so it, I think it's just under the radar enough that we can like build our business and be one of the like top podcasts when everybody fucking gets into it right Mm -hmm. because thankfully right now it's like if you know you know kind of thing right which is cool it will be ruined at some point sure by white people but (laughs) (laughs) by old white by people (laughs) by the old whites you know what i mean we ruin everything but for right now we still are able to build you know there's the dax shepherds and the like will ferrell people that just like get on the charts like day one and you're like okay cool Mm -hmm. I'm still working. I'm still yeah. gonna, yeah. I'm still gonna do this fucking yeah. thing. But I'll still try. Yeah. What made you want to start? What made you and Ross start the Ross Patterson Revolution podcast? Um. Well, the guys were. I don't forget what happened. They started. You, start they started Launch Code. Oh, yeah. Okay. They started Launch Code, and we were kind of like, well, I guess if we're all doing, doing a, a other podcast, stuff, and yeah. you, you never know. Really, you never know how long something's gonna last, sure. or how long someone's gonna be into doing something. So. In a way, it was sort of like a backup plan of like, hey, if if it all falls apart and everyone's like, fuck this, I'm leaving, we'll at least have something mm-hmm. to move it forward, right? So that's how it started. And then, and it was just like Ross's show, like Ross Patterson Revolution. Mm-hmm. And it was yeah. like, I was like the sidekick that was like, you know, interject every once in a while or, you know, be sitting off to the side. Mm-hmm. And um, but I just didn't let that happen. Fell in love with you. No, I just wouldn't shut up, and no. I just like st- I kept talking. <laughs> Everyone, I don't you, know if you even just read half the iTunes reviews that we have. Yeah, m- half of them are oh my gosh, I've been waiting for this moment. I'm so happy for Jesse. Like I love Jesse. I, <laughs> I think they just like have no. seen me just like in <laughs> next to Ross <laughs> this whole time, being like. Maybe I'll get on. I like finally got on the logo. Maybe like, I'll say five. Maybe I'll words. get on the logo. Maybe I'll put my name somewhere. You know what I mean? I'm just like, hey, look. I keep my head down. I keep working. There, and I there, was doing everything. People were waiting for you to have. I love it. Like, and some I appreci- type of I podcast that. platform. Yeah, and our fans of yours. I'm yeah. really excited for that yeah. moment for you. Well, it's a dream. Like, it is a dream to be have people like podcast that I do. Like, sure. that's all I want to do at this point. What like a, what a major compliment right yeah people saying oh for sure i don't think that will probably ever get old like it warms the shit out of my cold cold heart i know when you really do (laughs) have such a cold heart don't you time i do (laughs) but every single time i hear it i'm like that is wow like cool right that is a huge honor yeah and like yeah and i think it's uh, probably a lot of women too well guys and girls i think that are like dude i was i really wanted you to like Cause I always talk there's about a lot, it too. Yeah, I'm like, that's what I want. Like, I would want my own show, you know, with like someone that I like. Oh, that's you! <laughs> like, God. It's a dream. Well, that was and another question like, too. Is yeah. people ask want to know like kind of how the Broettes kind of got started and why I was brought on board. To those well, questions. you came. I okay. I had seen you with KGB. I don't know if we should whatever Say. but anyways i i had seen you with kgb and on um drinking bros mm-hmm. when ross came out went out to san antonio one time or whatever and they were always like this girl tiffany's cool and i'm like yeah she seems fucking cool like not he wasn't out there but he had interviewed and he was i was oh like, he wasn't there no he wasn't there but oh, he, so he was just on the phone yeah okay, and that's okay, when okay. I, at the time i was like ross is really fucking good at this oh, no. because he was over the phone and maintaining the conversation the entire time crazy right without even being present yeah so i was like that's talent yeah 
you know. And you, and I love that you recognized that. Yeah. And he loves that too. I'm sure he does. I'm sure he does. <laughs> I'm sure he does. But anyways, I was like, yeah, she seems fucking cool. Like she's with some dumb girl, but like who was apparently one of my best friends. Oh, and I thought you guys were best fucking friends, and I was like, mm, I tr- I don't trust her judgment. But then when you came to town uh-huh. and, and did, we did a drink and bro- a fake news, news, yeah, um. And I had met you and, and we were like, and you're like, no, no, no. Like, nah. Well, we immediately met too. And was like, hey, hey. Like, I'm saying hi to everyone, including you. Like, hey. Yeah. yeah. No, it was like walked in and was like, hey, like yeah, we were I was excited, really excited to, meet, to you. meet each other. Cause we had both heard probably about each other somehow. Yeah. Um, and then we did the show and it was like, I, I don't know. I just really liked I you. you. Yeah. Right. And, and I, like, I will be honest inside in my head the whole time. I'm hoping, I hope she likes me. Like, <laughs> Same. I, I was like, like she's me. so cool. And we like, made just our funny dance friend like, goof I'm like video. Yeah. Of being like, oh my God, we're like best friends right oh, away. Yeah. It's our first time hanging out. Oh my I God, know. we're best friends. Because that's kind of like a running two joke. two people got it. When people, well, because I think it's kind of comical when you hang out with a person like once or twice and all of a sudden they're like, calling you best a, friend. a friend, yeah. let alone a best friend. Yeah. To me, that's like a red flag. Like, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Like what's wrong with you that you don't have one? <sighs> yeah. Um, And then, I mean definitely liked you and I was like I mean but there's no way like that you would do a show I don't know you didn't you didn't live here or whatever no. I knew you were <laughs> full on in you know military and stuff and like I just didn't think in a million years and then um you can't you came out again and we did like another show and Ross was just like another she's neat a uh, drinking yeah, bros or a new show, show yeah. and all together Ross is like so what you think? I and know. kind of like poke, like kind of breached it a little bit. And I was kind of like, wait, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Like, why me? Which well, was the weirdest he part. Was, I think he first was like, you ever gonna get out? You ever think about? Yeah, he did. And you were like, no, no, dude, no. And so but I'm, I'm like, also, oh, well, and then honestly, no. too, I was on the podcast. So what what was I going to do with the guys? Like sit there and explain my situation for, la- for the next 30 minutes about, well, you know, I you could, know they don't want to hear it. I don't the know. Guys don't yeah, care. Yeah, yeah. They don't want to hear no, it. No, they don't. Here we can talk about it. For sure. But they don't give a fuck. So yeah, of yeah. course I was like, no, I'm staying in. For sure. And that was like the right thing at that time because it was like, what did, why are you asking me? Like, yeah. yeah. I have gonna, no other thing. Yeah. There have no other reason not to be right now. Like, mm-hmm. that's what I'm doing. Um, but they were they talking about doing like an all female one? Like a kind of. Well, they and, wanted and, me to do a show with someone. Yeah. Like, I had. I was the only girl in the company and it was just like, I think they almost wanted me to like just have a it. girl yeah. to like either talk to, do a show <laughs> with or like have on the show with me or they were just trying to find a way mm-hmm. um, for me to have a show. And I didn't really even think, I didn't really know what that was. I was like, okay guys, like I'm doing so much shit. Like, I don't know. I would love to have a show. I just don't know what that is. And then when they were like, when Dan was like, I talked to her, I mean, she could, she'll do a couple and see how it goes mm-hmm. and then it was just like from there i was like dude wham bam thank you ma'am wham, bam thank you ma'am <laughs> right the first one that we did guys was the first one that you saw yeah and that, that was like, like kind of one of the first times we hung out that was the first time we hung out like officially yeah during the first podcast like literally number one yeah. was our first time ever. hey what's up let's sit down okay what are we gonna talk about like but we, we you can kind of tell when you're gonna get along with someone yeah and you can talk to them pretty easily yeah so it was one of those things where we both knew that because there was no way that I was going to go into it if I felt str- extremely uncomfortable with you. No. And I know for a fact that you would be like, well, I'm not like cool I can't do this every day. Right? Tiff, yeah. Right. If this was not going to mesh. Yeah. Well, and one of the things was just like being open, which you are. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's the hardest thing is to find someone that's just going to be like, fucking say whatever. Mm-hmm. Be honest. Not try and please everyone. Just like literally be themselves, which is the hardest thing yeah. to get someone to do. Like we have, not that I was trying broettes, but like we had had other people come and kind of like see if that was a thing. And it was with Ross. So we would all three be yeah. together, but he would kind of be seeing if it was something that would work. And it just, what you know, it just wasn't either they were nervous or like the, the moment passed them by or something mm-hmm. where they just like were not being themselves and it's really the only thing you need to be i know you have to have no shame no shame in your fucking game like you don't have to worry about how you look how your well, face that was looks the clearly heart is <laughs> because the first one that i went on i'm in a fucking sweater oh yeah you were in but and i, I mean, didn't I have I, I didn't have any makeup on in the first really one? 
Yeah, well, no, no, not the first one with you, but I'm saying the first one with the guys, oh, right? Like oh, with yeah. Jared and KGB. Oh, okay. And KGB's in the bathroom. Oh, for sure. Her, her hair's curled, fake boobs eyelashes, out. and boobs yeah. out. And I'm like, wait a second. And so the guys were like, hey, it's really hot. Do you want to like change into a tank top? And I was like, sure. So I put on some fake eyelashes, put on a fucking oh, wow. black rifle tank top. Yeah. And that was it. Cause I didn't know. Like, yeah, I, yeah. And immediately, effortless. Jared was effortless. No, beauty. but I just didn't know this. You yeah, know, yeah, no. it's like, whatever. And then Jared was like, hey, is there any stories that you would talk about? And I'm like, here's a fucking laundry list of shitty things like yeah stupid things that i've done yeah and we went into it and I, of course i'm gonna give him shit if he's gonna fucking give me shit oh for sure you know and there you go and that's how it just they were yeah, like yeah, okay yeah. cool she can hold her own yeah type of thing yeah. i was like oh okay yeah yeah i'll come back i don't know what the fuck i'm doing but but you could see how um it comes off in that episode alone how it comes off if you aren't being yourself mm-hmm. like the other person was um and how it's just not interesting to fucking watch or hear or anything. Mm-hmm. Like, it's pretty to look at, right? It gets old after a and bit. And it's like When you realize fun. that someone's not being true. When they act a certain way, right, on a podcast or to a person, and then once everything shuts off, they're a completely different way. You're like, wait a second. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, it's the thing of, like, film versus, like we were talking about, film versus musical theater, right? Mm-hmm. Where, like, with film for example like you can't fake it you can't lie like it will pick up everything you see on movies where it's like "Mm, i'm not buying it yeah like the chemistry whereas in a musical you know a musical or a big theater production you can like you can fit you can be fake you can be over the top and you have to be yeah then same with podcasts everything looks kind of fake you can tell if someone's being like even a little bit either untruthful or not real in a podcast i mean it picks it I'm sure you can tell when someone feel is off, is off, or like whatever else. For sure, you know, and that's okay. Sometimes I mean, as we're long gonna as you, ha- well, we're I'm gonna have my days for me sure. Too. Here. <laughs> but it's, I'll I'll always say it right. Yeah. Like I'll just be like, dude, I'm just like today is a weird day, and I have them every once in a while. I think, me too. I think in the, one of the shows I said it, where I just like I'll wake up and be like, who the fuck do I think I am? that people want to fucking listen to me. It's so stupid. I get, I get like, like embarrassed that. for I a second, too, right? Where you're like, oh my God, am I just like so out of touch and like crazy that I think people fucking like me and they don't really like, you know, you like, I have the same thought. Go off, right? But yeah. I'll always be honest about that and be like, I am feeling off because that's real, right? Yeah. No, yeah. So it's okay to like have an off day or not feel good as long as you're not trying to pretend 100% that that's not happening. Mm-hmm. I don't know. No, I agree. And that's what brought us to where we are today. I know. And that's, <laughs> and we've gotten to present. Oh my gosh. Right? I was like on my own episode of Marin. No, I loved it though. Right? I got to, like, I felt like I really got to know you a lot better. And I know, know for a fact and guarantee so many people are going to love the fact that they got to know, know you. Me. And I'm sure we could literally go down so many different yeah, roles I mean, of your life too. For sure. But it'll and come out in come the out show. In <laughs> Believe me, we'll talk about all the weird Get right into my ass. I, I was, no. was going to say, I'm going to get more into these acid trips later. <laughs> Have you ever done acid? No. Just mushrooms, right? Yeah. Or none? Nothing. Uh, no, I've done mushrooms. Oh, okay. I, you will notice uh, as we go into my life eventually later, yeah. I grew up very naive, I super can't. just ignorant about, you know, so many wait. things. But it was the right way to do it, I'm um, telling you. And barely done any drugs. <laughs> it was the right way to do it. So. It really was. Yeah. Um, so I guess it's time to get into drinking brew of the week. Let's right? do it. And by the way, guys, um, send them in to our Facebook and Instagram so we can highlight these amazing women in your guys' lives. Yes. And we're um, getting a lot of submissions, right? Yeah, we're getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we haven't got a f- we haven't gotten any like in the last week. But okay. Just keep sending them in and we will get to them. OK, perfect. Um, so this submission this week is from J.D. Johnson and he is submitting bro of the week. So he goes, I would be remiss. If I didn't nominate my lovely wife, um, her name is Sergeant Brittany Johnson. She's the ultimate badass and one of the strongest women I have ever known. So eight years, um, Mississippi Ar- Army National Guard is what she is. A mother of four. Holy shit. And he said himself, I guess he's grouping himself up in the child department. I love you. <laughs> I know. Good job, buddy. He goes, we adopted her nephews from... Um, abusive parents and it was the best thing we have ever done oh um God. then we were blessed with two of our own when she retired from the guard she worked for a year as a waitress um and was the fastest promoted female in the company history 
Love and that. now she's a salaried manager, which is so awesome. Of course she and was because she's she a veteran. I know. Everyone and was like. <laughs> yeah, she knows how to fucking work. She knows how to fucking work. She showed up on time. She fucking did her work. Exactly. She was prepared. So she got moved up like. I mean, course people were like, oh my God. Yeah. And she is um, my sugar mama. And now, oh, I love and, it. And love of my life. Um, she puts up with me listening to Drinking Bros all the time. But you two have converted her finally. And Yay. she's now an avid listener. Um, what a girl. It should be mentioned that I'm a fireman and I work 24 hour si- shifts. So she spends one third of her life raising our four children Ooh. by herself on top of everything else that Shiree does. You could have just said that. I know, and it right? Been- so she's my everything and more than deserving of Broette of the Week. Cheers from the Johnson. So fucking Brittany Johnson. You rock my socks off, woman. Bro at of the week. Well deserved. I know. Jesus. Yeah, thanks for all your service and everything that you do. Yeah. And for just giving women an amazing name. Continued amazing Continued name. Continued amazing name. So this is for you. Cheers, Cheers, Brittany. How'd you feel about today's episode? I feel good. Do you feel now, good but I'm now? Thinking, now? But now I'm obviously going over everything I said. No. And I was like, uh, but... <laughs> That's what I do but after look, the end of every episode. I got it over with. Now you guys know uh, A little things. bit more about J-Balls. J-Balls. Um, I have to say, <laughs> I don't know if I was talking very fa- like favorably about Ross, but like he is the love of my life. Of we are partners in this life. I can't even fucking imagine. As weird and as crazy as he is, mm-hmm. I can't imagine doing it with anyone else. Yeah. Like who else would put up with me? as well you know what i mean mm-hmm. so i think people throw know that, that in you're there. just you're being sarcastic about things too and look and, and listen and we and can, i wasn't being untruthful i mean can, sometimes he, i mean for the most part he's not very funny <laughs> <laughs> because i've heard all the shit before <laughs> sure but if you guys hear it for the first time hilarious yeah. right but if you keep hearing the same shit over and over yeah and, and then i'm sure I we right could talk literally a whole episode too <laughs> about ross and husbands and just everything else so we didn't even want to get down that yeah whole and i don't think we hole can we have to get that out of the way before we press record we were yeah. talking about our husbands <laughs> we were just venting, the whole time, to, each venting to each other yeah. i don't think we'll do that on air no ever, i'll just respect I mean, for them yeah, yeah we'll yeah. talk about we can talk about marital we'll issues joke about them there and you go. things like that but yeah, yeah. we just gotta still we be got respectful to. you know how it goes girls yeah anyways this is really fun though i know it was um, thank you for sending in questions guys yeah and giving a shit i don't know it feels weird, but I like it. No, and always you guys send in questions, uh, topics, anything that you guys want at all. You guys wish for us to talk about. Yeah. Um, I was told we want to talk about what you guys want to yeah, hear. Basically. I was told that we forgot to mention queefing in the sex episode, so we got to talk about that. Oh God! I know, right? We didn't even touch on that. We, we have to do a so part much two. Shit. Like, oh, we got to do a part two. And then two. Um, I talked to Dr. Frank as well Good. about doing the. Um, I, I was asking if he had anyone in his practice, and he was like, "No, I do that stuff Perfect. too." Perfect. I was just gearing everything towards the guys, but like we need him like on anytime then. you guys want me on. So you guys have asked for that as well, yes. which we're gonna try and do. Um, just talking about women's hormones and how it affects literally everything mm-hmm. that we do without even us knowing it. So that'll yeah. be coming up soon too. That's great. And so hit us up on Facebook and Instagram, Jesse Wiseman and all this stuff, Real Tiffany Hart. We're on TikTok as well. Oh, God. I know. Yeah. And uh, thank you guys so much for rating and reviewing us on iTunes. We really appreciate it. Keep yeah. doing that if you guys can. And we are going to be having some swag eventually come in. I know Ooh, you guys yeah. have been like talking about T-shirts and stickers and stuff like that. And so we're going to get to work on those things. And I figured that... We're going to do like a fun little giveaway, right? We, we, yeah, we have for sure, to for with sure, some of that sure. stuff. And the, the people who are going to be entered into the giveaway are going to be all the people who rate and review us on iTunes. Because, listen. That's how we have you guys to hook do us it, up, you guys. We'll yeah. hook you guys back up. We really appreciate it. So, man, Jables. I want, I want <laughs> Jesse's girl. girl. <laughs> <laughs> Where was that person for karaoke, Where's huh? That? Leaving you in the dust. I will never live it down, and I'm so sorry. I will give you shit till the day okay. you die. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. Yeah, you've been watching every move and plotting your next move on. Every girl I'm moving on. Yeah, don't show better things to do. Yeah, go buy some fucking shoes. Yeah, you're irritating. Yeah. You're irritating. Yeah.